people love that drum, that snare. It's Collider Live. It's a Thursday. Uh, I'm not Christian Harloff, obviously. I'm, uh, I'm Josh McCuga. They, the entire crew is in Chicago. Uh, but I am joined by the lovely Sinead DeFreeze. Shanasty, what's up? Good you're, morning. You're a Chicago native. I am. Yes. Yeah. Are you going to? You're not going. I know where you're going this weekend. <laughs> <You're not laughs> we're going to talk about it this. Also joined by Johnny Lacoste, comedian extraordinaire. Quite nasty. Uh, Quad nasty. Yeah. yeah. The other <laughs> person not going good. to Chicago. It's uh, <laughs> Chicago. I'm, I'm leaving tonight on the red eye. My flight's at 1 a.m. I think I land in Chicago at 9. Nice. So uh, I'll be there this weekend, Friday, tomorrow. Uh, Ob- Ken and I, Ken Knapsack and I are opening up for Mark Ellis, the 7, thir- or 7 and 10.30 shows. Uh, he's taping his hour special at Reggie's Rock Club. I believe every ticket is sold out. Uh, but, you know, if you want to come by and have a drink with us, we will be there. It's a big deal. It's it's going to be huge. The, the shows are going to be awesome. Uh, I'm psyched about it. I know Mark has been working his butt off doing sets all over the place, getting ready for this. I saw him run most of the hour when we were in Seattle, and it's very, very good. Uh, of course it is. E- even when we were heckling him. How big is that venue? I believe it's like 300 plus seats. Wow, that's going to be a great taping yeah, for him then. Yeah, it's, and it's, I mean, both of them are, are sold out. And there's a meet and greet in between. And then big show Saturday night. At uh, in Chicago for the Schmodown. I believe there's also a Schmodown. There's a qualifier Schmodown Friday at Star Wars Celebration. So look at the thing. It's called like Trivia Star Wars Trivia Masters. And there's five people that will play Alex Damon. The winner of that will play Alex Damon at the Schmodown Saturday night. Uh, the Athena Theater in Chicago. I think there's maybe like eight tickets left. I think Oof. we're trying to get to a thousand. Wow. But they said I think max was like nine seventy. But they're going to pack people in there. Break the uh, fire code. Yeah, break the That's fire exciting. code. I know it should be a great, great weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to the weather. Uh, it's supposed to be cold and rainy uh, all weekend, which as a Pittsburgh kid I'm used to, but as an LA guy now I'm a snob yeah. about. Yeah. So yeah. I know. I mean, I even when I go back to Chicago, I'm like. This is, this is why I don't live here anymore. Uh, right? I love it, though. When it rains out here, I'm like, sadness! Yes! <laughs> Please come back! Yeah, but we had too much rain this year. We had year. so much rain. I yeah. don't mind the rain, but I just don't like the the grayness makes me very unmotivated. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. I can't do anything when the it's missus, raining. The missus always talks about, she's like, this would be just such a great day to sit around and watch movies. Like, it is. It's, it's a it's, Wednesday! It's, it's, an, it's Netflix weather, though, and yeah, I'm it just is so Netflix lazy. Weather. You're right. So better than that weather. than having the whole state on fire, I guess. That's, that's yeah, true. That's true. True. Yeah. It is kind of funny when you're driving. Like we've driven north a couple times since we've had all the rain, and the amount of green that you haven't seen in probably like I ten know. years is incredible. I also saw something I never thought I'd see going over the grapevine, which is you know it's not a cold place. I saw snow in Nemnar Hills right there, mm. wow. right there, yeah, which was crazy. Well, we had a wow. really crazy winter this year. We did, we did. But I feel I feel bad saying that because the winter. rest of the country <laughs> yeah. had it so much worse. Because right now there's some one of those like cyclone bombs. Uh, hitting the Midwest, not Chicago, but like from Colorado to the Dakotas. They just got like 20, 30 inches of snow, and it's just sitting over there, just dropping snow in April. So if you want to buy a house, it's affordable there. (laughs) Sucks. Sure. Not here, though. Sucks. Yeah, it's not the best. And we got Cody in the booth. Cody, you doing okay back there, I'm doing okay, Josh. Yeah? And you're leaving for Chicago this this afternoon, this evening? In a short few hours. Yeah, you excited, bud? Uh, yeah, I don't like airports, but I'll be Really? Fine. Yeah, just the whole process. That's all right. Oh, I see. Are you TSA pre-check? No. You should get that. Change your whole perspective on yeah. everything. Are you TSA pre? No, but <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my yeah. dad is and my boyfriend is, so I always like get, you know how they just oh, automatically. The yeah. yeah. Um, it's great. It I is. love it. It's the funny thing though is if you fly out of Burbank, which unfortunately I'm not flying out of Burbank tonight. Usually the line for TSA pre is longer than the actual security because nobody flies through there. Right. Not one person flies through there. It's one of those airports where the security is like, you look okay. Yeah. Come Burbank just calls you by your first name. Yeah. yeah. It's just tiny. <laughs> There's only like four people working there. Yeah, totally. And they're all very nice. They're it's so eerily quiet there. It's <laughs> no. like the perfect setting for like a slasher movie. Like somebody could die and nobody would find out because nobody goes over there. It's the point where you get there and it feels like. Like it's an apocalypse. Yeah, it's right? so weird. You like pull up into the drop-off place, whereas like an LAX, like you have to fight oh. for your life. It's NASCAR. You yeah. Talk about apocalypse. Last year, or last week, I did fly out of LAX, and it just so happens American Airlines, their entire system shut down overnight. Oh. So you get there, and it's just everyone running in circles uh, into each other. <laughs> it's it's almost like um, what's this? A bird box. It's the thing, and just oh, don't yeah. look at anyone because you you might just go crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's a scene at LAX. I flew back. Um, Thanksgiving, the Sunday night of Thanksgiving. I think I may have told the story in here before. Sunday night of Thanksgiving, we get there. 
Uh, Sunday it, after Thanksgiving? Yes, the Oof. Sunday after Thanksgiving. We did not plan it that well. My mom and dad guilted us into going to visit them. And I love you, mom and dad. I don't know if they're watching this, but uh, they rarely do. I don't think they get it. We just got them Amazon Prime, by the mm. way. And they freaked out for Mrs. Maisel. Like, freaked. My mom was like, that was me. That was me. I was Mrs. Maisel. I was like, you weren't. I don't <laughs> think you were, mom. Aww. You were like Miss Pittsburgh in 1963, <laughs> but it's fine. So, Which um, is still a big deal. It's pretty cool. Yeah. The funny thing is- Free Permanti sandwiches for a year. So my- they, well, they just didn't exist back then, mm. and my mom wasn't eating French fries, I don't think. But so, my my we just moved my grandmother into an assisted living facility. She's crushing it. It's actually really nice. I went to a buffet lunch with her. It was Ooh, amazing. Nice. They've got all the ice cream you can eat. It's amazing. <sighs> So, but she, we were cleaning out her house and my mom was like, look at all of these pictures of me. So all of these pictures of her from dances, from like beauty pageants, all that stuff, there's nobody else in the picture. My grandma was like, yeah, I cut that ex-boyfriend out of there. So my grandma went through and just cut out ex-boyfriends Stop. out of prom pictures. That's amazing. Homecoming. See, I yeah. feel like my mom like saves all of those pictures and then she'll like. Make fun. Yeah, she'll no, she'll no, she'll like for Kelly. She's like, he was nice. Do you want to text him? Oh no! From like seven years ago, and we just look at her. We're like, no. <laughs> we're business women, mom. Kel. He was Co. so nice. He I was love so Kel. nice. I miss him. He was good to you. Oh, no. She's the worst when it comes Whoa. to that. Yeah, she said it all the time. That's a And burn. after I broke up with my ex, I was like absolutely heartbroken. Sure. She was like. Well, you really think you should have broken up with him? Oh God! And I called my sister, and I was like, "I'm gonna kill her." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I, well, you know, I mean, my mother has a great history of of ruining girls uh, that I've dated, right? And uh, she likes Amanda, obviously, and she calls her sweet Amanda. And um, when we first started dating, I kept Amanda secret for months because I didn't want to expose her to the insanity yeah, that funny. is my mother. Mm -hmm. And we were telling a story. Uh, I was on vacation with my family, and I had an allergic reaction to nuts. I'm allergic to everything. Mm. And Literally everything. And he's allergic to everything. He's a white guy. Everything. Yeah. everything. And the funny thing is, is that in L.A., they couldn't care less. But if you're gluten-free, oh, man, they walk you in on a red carpet, yeah. put you on the chair, They're sit like, you down. Congratulations, you're gluten-free. <laughs> you're vegan and gluten-free. Meanwhile, yeah. you're, you're swollen up like Martin uh, yeah. Short yeah. in uh, Pure Luck. Yeah. The yeah. vegan food festivals every weekend now are insane. I don't even know. I can't go oh, to those. Like in, I live in Highland oh. Park, and it's become like the vegan hub. Oh. You know, it's like all the same. Everybody, All vegans look the same now, you know? You notice that? They're all starting <laughs> to look on. the please, same. Please go on. I like and this. And they, they have these pop-up tents. And the lines for these like vegan tacos or like vegan burritos or vegan mac and cheese, they're all down mm. York Boulevard in Highland Park have every single any weekend. Have you I've had vegan tacos. Okay. If you don't eat <laughs> vegan mac and cheese in the first 10 seconds, it congeals into a weapon. That's yes. what I'm saying. That's the thing with vegan food. It's like it all it all ends up congealing. You know, what did you get eventually. in the face with? It was a vegan mac and cheese yeah. patty. It really hurt. It's yeah. concussed. Yeah. Well, we went. I, we actually may have been at the same meal. It was a Justine Marino birthday party. Sure, there's a thing of dinner like six, seven years ago. Oh my! And we were at Cafe Gratitude, which if you've never been to a Cafe Gratitude, which I'm sure you have, have you been to a Cafe Gratitude? No, because I heard that their name, the names of their foods are like correct intention, and I was like, I can't, no. I can't have to go to this place. So we're so. There was like 12 of us, and our, our waiter, I know his first name, and I'm not going to say it because I don't want to offend the guy, but he was like tall and lanky. He was real lurchy, and he had a unibrow straight across his face. Solid. I mean, this unibrow was incredible. And he comes to the table, and he's like, uh, welcome to Cafe Gratitude. And I was like, hey, man, I'm just looking at your menu. I noticed that everything has nuts or seeds, and I'm allergic to nuts and seeds. And he just looked at me straight up, and he's like, we just recommend you don't eat here. Yeah. <laughs> And, I was like, and you gave him gratitude. You said, thank you for not killing cool, me, sir. Right? That's amazing. So then Ellis and I left. We had a beer. They Chilies. were all eating. We went across the street, got Jersey Mike's, oh. came back to the dinner. Yum. And the funniest part of the meal was everybody breaking up the check. I'm like, all right, who had the I am grateful? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, okay. Yeah. And then who had the I am super? Oh, yeah, that's you, <laughs> okay. And I was like, what was the I am super? Was that the Caesar? I don't even know. It is the dumbest restaurant yeah. in the world. Yeah. Who yeah. had the thanks, dad? <laughs> Yeah, I heard that. I was like, what is this place everyone always talks about? Yeah. I looked up the menu, and I was like, is this a joke? Like, yeah. I don't get it. But they're actually named after, like, you yes. know. Yes, being one with the right. world. exactly. Mm. So hey, we, what's the Wi-Fi here? Uh, it's on a thing. Cody, can you email Sinead the Wi-Fi? Or just text it to me. text it Should or somebody. Should computer with me? Wait, hold on. No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I here, just... You have the rundown. I can yeah. get you the Wi-Fi in the second hour. Yeah. How's that sound? That sounds good. 
Um, I will say also, uh, I don't I'm, I don't want to bury the lead, but Sinead is also going to be on TV talk today, which Yay. the fans were freaking out about. And I'm trying to get a hold of David Griffin now. The fans were kind of freaking out because I like tweeted, he's like, I'm allowed to come on now. And I was like, well, why didn't you tell me a year ago? He had talked to his boss about maybe coming on maybe TV talk, the us. old reunion. I know. Maybe that's he doesn't miss us as much as we miss him. So Twitter just exploded. Yeah, get him on, get him on, get this. And I was like, okay. So I reached out. He's like, I can't, I can't do it. I was like, why the hell did you tweet? <laughs> Because now, oh, now everybody's like, well, David Griffin's coming on. No, he can't come on because he's shooting something because he's also going to Chicago for the Star Wars celebration. Wow. wow. And my he's brother, crushing it, man. He's doing well. IGN's doing well. Uh, it's a big company. I mean, IGN's he's, been doing well, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 He's yeah. the streaming editor. He's he's a madman. Good deal. Uh, and I he love loves him. it because all the streaming stuff is British. And he, fr- oh, and yeah. he freaks out for yeah. British TV. So, um, <laughs> so, but Sinead's going to be on. And I'm trying to get David to call into either this show or... Or to TV talk at some point, depends on like his shooting schedule, whatever. Uh, we have a lot of things planned for this show. Um, we're listen, we're all, we're here for two hours. It's live. You guys are probably wondering what's happening at Star Wars Celebration, bouncing back and forth. We also are going to take some tweets and some calls in the last half hour. Sorry, Johnny, you won't be here for that. No, one. Daddy has to go to work. Yeah, it's okay. And then get my taxes done, and then cry. <laughs> The, I have to get my taxes done. Yeah, I have too. to do my taxes. My dad was like, <laughs> you're going like away the whole weekend. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, where are you going to do your taxes? I was like, yeah, I'll do it when I get back. He's like, when you get back on Monday? I was like, yeah. He's like, do you know Monday's the deadline? And I was like, oh. <laughs> right. And he was like, okay. Sure, it's good fun luck. talking to my friends back home about taxes because they're just like, oh, just hand over your W-2s. I'm like, hey, you can't. I know. <laughs> that's You know what? It's that's It's so not fair, actually, because yeah. nobody understands the life of having all 1099s. No. And mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. having to expense, like, everything just to get a refund. I know. I, my uh, whole uh, life is an expense report. Everything oh, yeah. I've, like... But you I, have to. You have to. I mean, and, and Amanda doesn't understand. She likes to put... She likes to spend cash. I was like, whatever you do, do not spend cash. I was like, the only yes. time you have cash is for emergencies. Everything has to be on a card yeah, so that so it can, you can be, look yeah. at it. Print the end it of the out. Season. You can put a little highlight over yep. it. Because yep. I used to keep receipts, and then a taxi called me. He's like, is anything under 70 you don't worry about? And I was like, okay, so I'll keep the big receipts. But then you look on a credit card statement or anything like that, and there's a full breakdown yeah. of what it is. That's what I started doing that like a couple years ago. and Everything on a card. Everyone was like, I don't think you can do that. I think you have to have receipts. I was like, no. 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 Yeah. I like called and found out. I was like, hey. <laughs> Can I IRS. print out my statement and just Credit highlight that? Statement, boom. Boom. Yeah. yeah. But you have to. That's the, I mean, doing anything in entertainment, you get 1099s, which is great. Because, like, sure. people are like, oh, you don't get taxed. So the whole year, you get your check. If it's if the gig pays 4000 you get 4000 Yeah. But then come tax time, they're like, remember all those taxes you didn't pay? <laughs> No, and it's it's legitimately. You should have a kid. They give you some more money. I've heard. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, or, I will get well, there. When, maybe. Amanda, when Amanda calls, that's you should why. Tell her. That's why you have kids. Oh, is it tax <laughs> for purposes. taxes? We already got the marriage break, right? That's we a got tax the marriage break. break. We'll party yeah. on. I mean, it's not. It's not as big as you think. All right. Well, then I won't get married. It, it's. <laughs> Don't you do that to <laughs> Do your parents put the marriage pressure on you at all? Not at all, actually. My mm. parents were raised, they were so poor growing up, they had to put themselves through nursing school. Mm. So they've always been like, you live your life and don't worry about anybody else. And I think I was a bit of a detriment now. Are your parents but, old prospectors from the yes. 1800s? Yeah, oh, okay. there, there's gold in the, the hills. You live your life. <laughs> you do it there, Johnny. Uh, I've had the same accountant for 13 years now, and every year his comb over looks a little worse. And I uh-huh. think it's because of me, because he only has regular people as clients, yeah. and then I walk in. And I'm like, here's my shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Amanda has one W-2. I have like a stack of papers oh, yeah, and 1099s and all that kind of stuff. Oh, dude. My dad calls me. He's like, hey, so I retired. And, you know, my, my dad's doing like some 1099 work. He's like, these 1099s are crazy. And I was yeah. like, welcome to our world. It's awful. My it's, dad used to do my taxes every single year. And yeah. then literally last year he was like. Nope. And he was like looking. He was like, <laughs> this is every year it gets worse. Every year. It really does. And then he was like. Yeah, you're ready to file an extension. I was like, <laughs> and then yeah. he was like, I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> like, just quit. Just quit. He just straight up quit. It's crazy. Like, I spent so much money on my special. I'm actually giving out W nines to people like oh, my my wow. camp, my DP and my camera operator. It's yeah. terrifying. I know, but we'll see. And all the, I mean, all of that stuff. I just don't like adulting. If I'm just being honest, like totally. all of it, it's all the of worst. it sucks. It's the, and you know what? I, I tweeted it out last week. I when when in Armageddon. When Bruce Willis is, at, all the guys are requesting things before they go up in space. And then Bruce Willis, and then one more thing. None of these guys ever want to pay taxes again. I was like, listen, you can shoot me into space. I don't care. I, no training, shoot me straight into space. If I never have to pay taxes again. It's the worst. But I have to orbit the Earth alone for, 
No problem. And I don't want to miss a thing. That's why you have Texas. to get like, you have to get famous, you know? Because I was thinking about this the other day. I'm not even kidding because I was so stressed out about my okay. taxes. Okay. I was trying to fi fix oh. last year's taxes. Because last year's taxes. About the taxes. Yeah, I, yeah, last year's taxes are like also messed up. Oh. And 2016 taxes mm -hmm. are messed Me up. Too. So I'm three years now messed up and mm -hmm. I had to pay the IRS, even though the government owes me money, but sure. I have to pay them in the meantime until I get it figured oh, out. Yeah. I owe so from 15 still. Yeah. So <laughs> not kidding. Yeah, yeah, so they owe me money from 16, but because I can't figure out that's the year I had Harrison. When oh. you, so on top of like having Harrison and filing separate really for that it was also the year that I got a bunch of 1099s and I'm also missing a W2 oh, so it's... I, it's just a lot and I was literally in my bathroom and I was like having a panic attack yeah. well, I was like checking myself in the mirror and I was like you need to get your shit together and I was thinking like you, you know were, what like, the moment in the movie when they get like the come to Jesus yes moment in the it was the come yeah. to Jesus I was like yeah. you have a lot of things to do today you cannot sit here and, and cry punch like, the mirror you're, yeah I was yeah. like don't be a little bitch you can't go out there crying right. so I was like like in the mirror and I was thinking in my head I was like I wonder like Kardashians right sure from the time the year starts the time they probably never even think about no. taxes everybody's no. keeping track of their expenses yep. they have like accountants on accountants on accountants that they like taxes are like oh by the way like your taxes are done here's your refund plus they make money in across uh, around the world in different states they right. just have a lawyer an accounting lawyer with yeah. them or as we times. have to rely on the people that have employed us for random things to send like for example totally. I did a comedy club in Fort Wayne Indiana last year that had an electrical fire two months later <laughs> and I knew they were going to go out of business I showed up they were still using CDs like they just I had to show them how to upload a video to Facebook it was so sad and so pathetic and then they Fort went Wayne, under gorgeous. two months later and I, I hit up the woman who booked me she's like yeah they're not going to send tax just, you have to just report it yourself I'm like Jesus yeah and then when you have to report it yourself you have to file a 2535 and it's so funny because I was I was drunk at a party and I, yeah. I met this woman who worked for one of the companies I won't say it out loud <laughs> worked for one of the companies because we're all very familiar with uh -huh, it uh -huh. that owes me a W2. Sure. And I was hammered. And in my head, I was like, don't say anything. Don't say, say anything. It. Say don't it. say anything. Say and it. I was like, hi. And she's like, hi. And I was like, I'm missing my W2. Yes. <laughs> and she looked at me like, this effing bitch bringing this up at a work party, sure. right? At a like a function that wasn't even for her work. She was hey, there Janice. celebrating somebody else. And I was just like, oh, hey, I need my W2. Like dead serious. Hey, you know what? You sit, while I have you here. Well, yeah. Well, take a seat. Uh, I've got some things I need to bring up, yeah. mostly my W2. And there's nothing quite like bringing up taxes at the party to really get things going. Whatever, man. I got yeah. too many problems, all right? I got <laughs> pay tax from 2016. So it's like, come yeah. on. I mean, I hope uh, the IRS isn't listening. <laughs> We're gonna They're get like, toasted. We're gonna get that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> They're about to break down the door. Uh, I took we did uh we I took the Jeopardy test online last night and I had um uh, Dory and film it for Collider to like do it live. And I thought to myself, as I'm reading these questions out, I wonder if I can get in trouble for Jeopardy. I wasn't asking for help from any fans. I wasn't saying, because you only get, you get 50 questions, and you only get 15 seconds to answer each question. And you have to type in the answer. Right? I see. Spelling doesn't matter. At least they say that. So they make it you... really hard for you to cheat. Correct. Uh, because, I mean, like HQ, they give you 10 seconds to answer. You can, like, yell it, and maybe somebody Googles it. But you need somebody there to do it. But they can also, like, if you get them all right, there's something going on right. right like not that right. many people get them all right at least that's what i would imagine also right now on jeopardy there's a guy that is destroying the world he is has won five straight more than ken jennings he there i mean he the way he's playing right now he is the next ken jennings Whoa. he just broke the single game record two days ago by like thirty five thousand dollars. i mean not even close i always wonder like how people just like have all of this like and random knowledge inside of their brains he's listen his name is james holhauser Okay, mm. and he's got the and he's a professional gambler from Las Vegas. Wow. Yeah, and whenever he wants to make it a true daily double, he's like going all in, like he pushes it. But he's also extremely awkward. I mean, he's got to yeah, be somewhere I mean, on the scale. He like just on the won spectrum. five straight games in a row. Of course, he's awkward. How many? How much do you think he's won in five days on Jeopardy? Oh, I have I, no idea. Okay, five, give me, I'll give I don't you, know. Oh, I don't know how much they win even per game. So like. Usually, the, if it be a big winner is usually like twenty five thousand dollars. I was oh, gonna okay. guess a buck fifty, hundred fifty thousand. Okay, what do you think? After five days, five games. Five games. He won all of those games, yes. and he broke a record for once, which means Correct. he's having big ones. Yep. I would say, like two hundred thousand. Mm. Very close. Two hundred eighty-five thousand. Oh, five five days. After five days. I mean, crushing the record. Uh, I think Ken Jennings, after five days, had like 135,000. This guy's at almost 300K. He won last night with like 58,000. He what? his, his The, the one-day record that he broke. So the one-day record was 77,000. It was set in 2010. Uh, Ken Jennings 
wanted to set it, but he was like respecting the past because a guy that had set it before had passed away. And then this guy came along in 2010, set the record at 76000 and then this guy, 110000 That's insane. A little over $110,000 uh, in one day. Are his opponents day. just laughing the whole time? Yes, like the, the only, and here's the thing, he's so quick with the buzzer, he gets every double, daily double, he gets, I mean, it is impressive to watch. He also has the weirdest smile when they cut to him, he's like, and from a professional sports gambler from Las Vegas, James Hall, he just goes, Oh God! Oh Ugh. my God! And it's and he just looks at the camera. and I'm like, oh man, that is terrifying. It's, and the the greatest part is Alex Trebek. He's a great host, obviously. He shows no emotion. They're like, and he's like, and he just broke the single game record. Thanks for tuning in, folks. I was like, you're not gonna like shoot off a confetti cannon or something. Obviously, they don't know that going in, but you could have maybe produced something yeah. in the back end. He's probably afraid of loud noises. That the guy who won, he might be. I mean, he talks about you know the sports game, but you have to be like a number savant, right? But right. being this smart at something like this, and he just sits there and he's doop, 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 and no, there he there's no personality, there's no nothing. This guy is a literal machine. At least Ken Jennings had some personality. A lot of the big he's winners. Fun. Like Julia Collins, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Ken Jennings, super funny. Austin, the dude from, uh, I think he was from Austin. Uh, the bartender, super funny. This guy is a machine. There's no, I mean, and he he wishes happy birthday to everybody in Final Jeopardy. Like, happy birthday, booger, whatever. And then he wagers on people's birthdays for them as like a thank you. This is a numbers maniac. This guy is so good. Well, if you mean he's a professional sports gambler, so that makes sense, right? Right. Because like, obviously he has been factoring like money his entire career. Yes. But that's, it's just crazy that, He's won by just that. Like he, so, he, the closest thing that has happened. So, in the, in the second game, he wagered too much in a daily double and got it wrong, but he still won going away in Final Jeopardy. Right? The other two, other three matches, nobody's been within like forty thousand dollars. <laughs> That's crazy. But does he know all the answers too? Every answer. What? Uh, he hasn't missed the Final Jeopardy yet. He has gotten pretty much all the daily doubles, I think, except for two. What's this guy's name? His I'm name is James Holhauser. Oh, he is on friggin' fire. Cody, can you look up like James Holhauser? I believe it's H O L Z H A U Z E R. Yeah. And Jeopardy champion. And bring up a picture of him smiling because it's really pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look there at, is, right look there, at that top, face. Yeah, top one right there. He, there you go. Sure, there you go. That's he's a, he's the, a young guy. Yeah, young oh my, dude. What, he, is he like 15? It's crazy. And he is, I'm telling, Sinead. I'm saying as if I don't look 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm saying as if I didn't age real quick over the last two years. He's no. a ringer. Uh, he, wow. Uh, it's it's unfair. These, these other contestants, one guy didn't even make any money yesterday. He was in negative. I, I would be pissed. I'd be like, I didn't sign up for this. I know. I want a fair, fair competition. I think Alex is even like, guys, we can't, this. He won 110000 in a day. Like over him. He's Al like he's, so over him. He, he's just said, this is, could be our next Ken Jennings. This guy, if he keeps going at the rate he's going, I mean, he's got to come up against, I mean, this guy is Tom Brady plus LeBron James plus Sidney Crosby, plus Aaron Judge of the Yankees. All of them combined into one Jeopardy super athlete with the most awkward smile in the world. <laughs> the That's really funny. And Good for him, though, I know. honestly. 280K, wow. but he's also a professional sports gambler. So he's already got to have money. You yeah, can't just sure go he's into, loaded. Yeah, you can't just go into a professional sports game. Like, I you got can't 100 like bucks say, on this weekend. Right, you can't say it's yeah. your job if you're not still in it. Correct. Oh, he's yes. probably loaded. You want to oh, get blown yeah. away? He's go. married with a kid. Whoa. Yeah. Did not know that. Uh -huh. I mean, he said something about like getting married. I, but yeah, he's and I think even Alex when they're doing the interviews, he's he is Alex is sort of running out of questions because this guy is Watson the computer. I think this guy could beat Watson the computer. It's like Put him all up one, again. one word answers. Yeah, and he goes he, there and again. Sinead, there was no one point where he shows emotion. Just like one thousand. 800, and he just keeps going. He, there's nothing. He gives a smile at the beginning and a smile at the That's end. That's really then, cool. Good for him. Yeah. Savant. Way to go, Holhauser. <laughs> Holhauser. So uh, we've got a lot of like movie news happening. Uh, obviously, the title of the episode is Mark Hamill thinks we're going to see some Star Wars fatigue mm. in, on Star Wars Celebration Weekend. We also s took a picture of a black hole for the first time in the history of the world. I mean, this is Stephen Hawking's dreams coming true. It's unfortunate that he's not still alive. But before we get into that, uh, we've been working on a, a special project here, Johnny. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, you've put together a top. You took a survey of the top ten reasons people go to Coachella. Yeah. And this weekend is the first weekend of Coachella, is mm -hmm. it not, mm -hmm. Shani? It is. The first it of is, nine yeah. weekends, starts, I believe. Starts today. First of nine weekends. Yes. Two. Two mm -hmm. weekends. Got it. Got it. And then there's a uh, a coach. Uh, Stagecoach. There you go. I knew it was a country thing. Yeah. yeah, for white people. For white people. Yeah. I mean, black people. 
my my brother loves black egos. He goes to stagecoach? Yeah. He's probably Does the he... only black guy there. <laughs> well, because he's married to a white girl. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and so Coachella, listen, this is not, I don't like music festivals. I don't, I listen, I love music and I'll go see Journey anytime or, you know, a classic rock band. But to put me out in the middle of the desert to mm-hmm. listen to some it's of this music lot. that I've never heard, yeah. ever heard. Like half the SNL musical guests now, I'm like, oh. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's the big thing is like it comes down to who's playing, you know, right. but, um, so but yeah. you've been there the last few years, right? No, I went I went I've been twice. Oh. Are, you, are you working or are you just going for fun? No. Well, this weekend I'm only going on Sunday. Oh. Sunday is just like kind of like a treat to myself. But I actually I got VIP tickets for Whoa. for Sunday because I'm doing like other collab stuff. So I actually am working in Palm Springs okay. today, tomorrow and Saturday. Nice. Sunday is just like a treat myself. But I also have to do a collab at the actual festival. Oh, no. So it's just it's mostly work. But I'm taking yeah. my sister and okay. we're going to see. Ariana Grande. Now, the whole reason I was so excited about going is because for some reason I got Lollapalooza and Coachella mixed up, and I thought that <laughs> Lana Del Rey was playing Sunday at Coachella, <laughs> only to find out that it was Ariana Grande, which, which is fine. Sure. She's great. Yeah. But also, just wind me up. if I didn't have VIP tickets, that wouldn't be somebody I got. I would get super excited for. But right. I'm telling you, like, it depends on who's playing. Muse played the second time I went. Okay. Like one of the most incredible shows I've ever seen. Okay. So like it just like it really depends. And I saw Lana the last time I went, um, which was a few years ago, mm-hmm. and she was incredible. Lord played like the year that she blew up. Oh, Lord's good. Before she even was like anybody. Yeah. She wasn't a headliner, and it was so like intimate. So it really does depend on who's playing. I mean, Hendrix did the uh, Star Spangled Banner there. Yeah, I know. I mean, a lot the of hologram things. of him. Yeah. 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 Tupac. Sure. Tupac is, was there. Is Jay Z there this year? No, and Solange, which is Beyonce's sister. I, Solange or Solange? Solange. Solange. I, I say Solange. It's Solange. Oh, Solange. Yeah, I was listening to the Woody show. They Solange went on, on and on and on about it. She's killing it. I <laughs> saw she's been trending a lot. She's been well. She's been kicking people in elevators and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and she dropped out of Coachella. So that's probably why, why? she's trending. Oh. Production delays, but they haven't announced who's replacing her. Hmm. But she wasn't a headliner. Either. Oh, she wasn't a headliner. No, her well, hologram. Will replace the her. headliners yeah. this year, well, Childish Gambino, like that's uh, going to be a great show. Sure. And like Outcast did their reunion at Coachella the last time I went, Whoa. which was a few years ago. So and like, is Outcast doing it again this year? No, oh. but like that was amazing because Outcast. That was Incredible. like when I was like 11, 12, 13. Yeah, me too. I was also eleven. <laughs> <laughs> when they when Big Boy came out at the Super Bowl, I was so. Shocked that Andre 3000 didn't come out with him. I know, I love it was, him. Yeah, Andre is a very unique, they're both very unique. And yeah. I, I honestly, as much as I grew up love and outcast, yeah. I don't think we're ever going to see them get in studio again as much as I would love to uh-uh, see it. No, they're like over it. Never yeah. say never, ever. It's kind of like how like, we always say like maybe there'll be a friends reunion, but there won't. Yeah, I don't give a shit about the friends reunion. I, I want an outcast reunion. <laughs> yeah, you should watch yourself. I would oh, love so a friends you, reunion. Are you a fan? Oh, Sorry. Yeah, are you it. kidding me? It's so not a name. realistic show. <laughs> It is a very realistic show. Uh, I watch show. it every single day. Oh, wow. Right. It, the, the episode where uh, Monica and Chandler have sex for the first time. Oh, just I watched on. it yesterday. Did you? Yeah. But I watched just it on Netflix because I'm a loser. <laughs> like, I literally watch it every single day. I finished Amazing. it last week and restarted it immediately. Like, wow. that, that was the it's... third time in a row I've done that. Usually I wait a few months. Sure. Yeah, I can't. It's just my obsession. Friends is, you know, obviously in a, it, the lack of diversity is what people always point at it now. But it's still one that of the funniest shows. That show would never work in 2019. No way. It is so it's politically white. incorrect. Oh, yeah. It's like, there's so many awful things that they say in that show. Totally. But I mean, Joey should have been arrested for Me Too. <laughs> oh, like a thousand times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but, no, it's really bad. <laughs> but let's, like anything, suspension of belief. Right. Yes. And also it was the 90s, too. True. So you have to, like, forgive it a little bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, humor has changed and as some people would think for the worst, like my favorite show of all time is In Living Color. Groundbreaking show way ahead of its time. Yeah. If you go back and watch In Living Color, there's no way a lot of that would would fly today. Yeah, no. There's no way. Damon Wayans could not do Handyman in 2019. No. I mean, but it's still brilliant. <laughs> but nowadays, everything's so just blown up. And, and Amanda's, one of Amanda's favorite movies that she's tried to make me watch multiple times is Low Down Dirty Shame. Love it. Great movie. You like that movie? Absolutely. It's a no, great I've movie. I've never even it's heard of Jada it. It's Jada Pinkett Smith and Keenan Ivory Wayans. Keenan right. Ivory Wayans' name in the movie is Shame. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And Low Down Dirty Shame. shame. And I almost named like my son that. You know? <laughs> Did you? No. Ha! <laughs> that actually led to a I was like, color. Shame! I really like Shame. I guess I'll go with Harrison. Ding. Harrison's a great Ding. name. Shame. But no, that movie led to In Living Color. 
Okay. Yeah. That, okay. I did not know that. Yeah, Damon got fired from SNL because he they wouldn't let him do the characters he wanted, and then Keenan was able to get Living Color off the ground. I mean, that's a it's a great thing. It's not a great movie. Uh, <laughs> it's and it's actually a horrifically bad movie. Oh come on! It is real it's, it, bad. Okay, it's not great, but it's fun. I mean, listen, this is coming from a guy who loves the movie Airborne about rollerblading, and Bad Boys Two is my favorite movie. Ooh. So I'm it, I'm no I'm no stranger to loving bad movies. Shake your tail feather, buddy. But I have. It's a great song. <laughs> I have never had, like, I, I, during the movie, looked at my wife being like, what? <laughs> yeah. What is this? Yeah. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Jada Pinkett Smith is in it. I'm sorry. I, I was thinking, I'm going to get you, sucker. That's what led to a living color. Low yeah. down, dirty shame. You're right. That's not as good no. as what, okay. Jada yeah, Pinkett yeah. Smith plays his assistant. I think her name's like Tootie or Tootsie. I don't know. It's, re, it's Peaches. real bad. Peaches. Peaches. Thank you. There you go. That was pretty Ms. close. Miss Peaches! And it is it is brutal. Uh, <laughs> but yet she finds humor in it, and she I, I can still laugh at most every single Friends episode. Yeah. Right. It definitely has, um, it, I think if you were to show it, because I know a lot of people that have kids that are like around 12, 13, that love Friends. Yeah. That, that still love that show. It's a great show. It still, it still sort of holds up it really does. well. It holds up really, yes. really well. I mean, so does Seinfeld. I'll back you up. I thought I'm going to get you, sucker. That's a classic. Low Down Dirty Shame, not as much. No, Low Down Dirty Shame. I mean, uh, I'm going to get you sucker. Have you ever seen I'm going to get you sucker? That's oh, an awesome so one. Chris you Rock. Must. You must. One of his first like big roles. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Yep. I mean, it's a it's a really, it's funny. It's a funny movie. Okay. 1987. Yeah. Put that on the list. She puts it in there. Mm -hmm. I, I take all your advice now, you know? Do you? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Ever since True Detective, I was like, I guess I should have been listening to him this entire this time. This entire time. I th and I thank you for that text message. For I should have been listening to you this whole time yeah, because I, I did recommend I absolutely True should have. Detective. Yeah, and yeah. I watched Narcos because of, I did everything you told me to do after <laughs> wow. True Detective. Wow. I was like, because True Detective was so life-changing yeah. that I was like. What season? Uh, I watched the first one. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, and then I didn't watch the second one. I just watched the third one. The newest one. Yeah, which I didn't like. You didn't? No. Nope. The newest one? Nope. Nope. Oh, nope. I loved it. Nope. I think I, I liked like, it more than I one. I was like physically angry. What? Yeah. You are insane. <laughs> no, it's good. You are insane. You think season three is better than McConaughey and Woody Harrelson well, season I, one. Okay. I, I, I didn't say much better, but I like the ending of three better than I like the ending the of ending one. The ending is the worst part. I was... I was physically mad. Like no, what? I couldn't speak to anybody for like an hour. That ending was the Johnny's biggest pop out it. of life. No. no, it wasn't. Yes, it was. What? Like, are we allowed to talk about? Is sure. it spoilers? Are people gonna I'm get mad? I'm not gonna see it. It's fine. I don't <laughs> have time to watch. Mad? I'm sorry. Do it. Plug your ears if Go you ahead. don't want to hear. But you know what? Wait, wait. Let's yeah. hold it. Let's save it for TV talk. Okay, that's how it's called. Yeah. A tease. In the industry, that's called that's a good, tease. That's good because I've actually been working on this, oh, you know, this good. rant. So. Oh, we're going to start. It's and it's going to get heated. I, can, I can't, I'm like shocked. I, I think less of you right now. Wow. <laughs> wow. I would, I would never then, expect, I think less of you. I would never the, expect you to say that. It started out so nice. You were like, I'll listen to you, da 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 da. Yeah, nah. well, you ruined it. Now she's not going to watch. I'm going to get you sucking. Damn it, Josh. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Don't you watch Low Down Dirty Shame. Whatever you do, do not watch that movie. But I'm going to get you suckers with it. Over. Oh, my God. This started with Coachella. It somehow just spun it out. Just oh, yeah. Really I totally good. forgot we were talking about that. We're going to talk about Coachella. Now, yeah. for me, I can't I can't go outside. Here's my problem. You can't go I, outside. I can't go outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, if I'm going to Palm Springs, I'm going outside to play golf and drink beers. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. Now, well, you could, you could drink a lot of beers. And, I, I understand that. I mean, whiskey, too. Whatever. At the Heineken Lounge. Oh, you know me. Heineken sucks. <laughs> it's not the best. Uh, new sponsor of the show. Cody, can you run that Heineken ad? Oh, really? Whoops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Our bad. So I I can't, the the thought of like going into a place and then just going around to music venues that I don't really like and having to spend a ton of money on water and like have a camel back yeah. or it be too hot or me sweating through and having to rub up against some dude that's just wearing glitter wings. Yeah. That doesn't really appeal. It doesn't sound that To bad. me. <laughs> I mean, you're a big Glitter Wings guy. This, of course. This we know. How would you not be? But so, John, you put together uh, a list of the top 10 reasons people go to Coachella. Well, oh, yeah. It was an honor when you asked me to do the show. And when uh -huh. you put this on the rundown last night, uh, before I went to bed, I took a survey of thousands of people across the country <laughs> who uh, frequent Coachella. Sure, sure. And so the top 10 reasons. Um, and like I said, this is a very unbiased uh, top 10. Cody, can we get like a uh, – do we have like a sound effect for like a – we have definitely have one for 8 and 9, right? Yeah, I got some music right here. <laughs> okay. well, Thanks, Cody. So <laughs> oh, you suck. Son of a bitch! This is some. T it's it's gonna be stuck in your head. I guarantee you. This. This. That song will get stuck in your head. It's. 
What That's not it? good because songs that stuck in my head really easily. What is it from? So it's an eight, 1986 children's show, 65 episodes. It's I'm not going to say the name because every time you say the name, it's like Beetlejuice. They will play that song. Uh oh. And it was it was shot in Pittsburgh, which is why everybody oh. keeps getting me on it because they're like, well, you can't hate it because it was shot in Pittsburgh because I love everything from Pittsburgh. And uh, that's you guys just heard the first one. It's called. Um, What's it called, Josh? <laughs> Go ahead. All right, you know what I'm gonna say it just for the bit, so they, they get it. It's called Zubilee Zoo. Let's do Zubilee Zoo. Oh no. Oh, now that you said the name of it. No, it's gonna be stuck. Now I can hear them say it. Oh, wow, that makes it's me been... hate like the world. Yeah, and we can. I mean, we can show the trailer to you a little yeah. bit later, but it's just humans. Of... It's humans dressed as like. The people in cats, furries, yeah. but it's like furries. it's furries. It's totally furries, but oh, in 1986. Weird. Yeah. I feel like I've seen this. It's really bad. Um, Harrison has like a, an obsession with watching old commercials. Like that's oh. all he does is watch oh. like the. It's like the weirdest thing. My son sometimes. I'm like, am I raising a psychopath? <laughs> but he w- goes on YouTube and he playlists for 48 minute playlists of like the evolution of Kellogg's cornflakes. Wow. I, I swear, it's you guys. A little I'm, savant. I'm, your brother, you guys, I, mean, I am not making this up. Okay, and like all all logos. He loves the evolution of logos, so he'll watch and like the history of the Apple logo like he'll listen what? to it and he like knows you're, you're it. You're raising an ad executive. I know it's what you're doing. You're raising but, like, a madman. You're raising go, a whole Hauser. Yeah we go to <laughs> we go oh, to <laughs> we go to like anywhere yeah. and like we went to the hospital the day of his surgery and the guy yeah. sitting across from him was like hello and Harrison's like looking at his hat and I saw the Ford logo on his hat and I was like uh-uh. looking at Harrison he's like and I was like Harrison can you say hi and he's like I see Ford Ford cars <laughs> cars Ford. Oh, it's like Toyota. Let's go places. Like he knows. Oh my god! I swear to God. And I was just like looking at the guy, and I was like, it's like five o'clock in the morning. I was like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's like I was like, dude, I was just saying hi. Like I didn't need all this. Oh my yeah, god, that obsessed, is one of the funniest logos. The funniest kid things I've ever yeah. heard. What a or he, kid. He, I know. He, the other day he comes up to me. I'm not even kidding. He goes. Is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and from viewers like you. Thanks. <laughs> That's the old PBS thing. It's, yes, the, it's right after it's Sesame PBS. Street. He watches the evolution of the PBS logo, and it used to be called NET, which he like knows. Yeah. I'm not. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Man. It's insane. This sounds awesome. Yeah. This and when you ask incredible. him to do the alphabet, the last thing, when you ask him to do the alphabet, instead of doing the regular alphabet, uh-huh. he goes, A is for Apple, B is for Blu-ray disc, C, <laughs> I swear to God. He'll be like, D is for Disney, E is for eBay, F is wow. for Facebook. Give it a big thumbs up. Get out of G here. G is for Google. What did he, he find this out? I don't know. He's like, G-O-O, G-L-E. And I was like. They have a Google song? They, I've never they heard don't. Google song. They don't. Zubilee Zoo. Zoo. No, no. Zubilee Zoo. <laughs> Zubilee Zoo. <laughs> Kids are so much more brilliant. That, they are. So the girl that I, we're not, we're friends now, but oh. she has a six-year-old. This kid is a G- she tells me the stories about how he just outsmarts her adult friends uh, and how he destroys them in video <laughs> games at six uh, years old. I'm like, I can't even. I, my nephew it's, is it's unbelievable. six and a half, going to be seven in June. Uh, he beat me five straight times in Madden by like eight touchdowns. I'm like, I, I can't do this. I'm terrible. Because you have thumb you. tendinitis. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> totally. oh, these old thumbs. <laughs> these old thumbsies. <laughs> I actually have like a, uh, a carpal tunnel workout that I do in my car rides here. Like I bought oh. these things because my hands were getting from typing so much yeah, and like writing and all that stuff. It, my hands started to hurt. And my, my whole family has history of early onset arthritis. Uh-oh. So we started this thing. Oh. It works. That's great. It's great. It's yeah. like working for my hands. As a physical Fantastic. therapist, I applaud you. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. I'll work on your forums anytime you need it. Yeah. Oh, Do you know you? what? Do you remember like five years ago? One time Johnny came over. I had a my mi- I had a cluster migraine. Oh, yeah. I had a migraine for like six days straight. This okay. one time I was in so much pain. It was to the point where I was like taking like five etc. in a day. And Johnny drove all the way over because um, Kelly was like, "Hey, my sister's really bad migraine," and he literally just like pulled the migraine out. Johnny Magic yeah. He was like, mm. yeah. I mean, I practice dark magic. It's fine, <laughs> but I use it for good. Yeah. Yes, that's good. It was for great. You. Yeah. Well, no, I've known you. I've kind of known Kelly for probably. 10 years, I think. Mm, yeah. And so, yeah, I've known you for a long time, too. The first time I met Kelly, I went. I was at her office back in the day, and I looked at her business card. I was like, are you Sinead's sister? And she goes, yeah, idiot. And I was like, <laughs> I was like I got I'm an idiot. You're right. Yeah, yeah it definitely. It's my bad on that one. Yeah. All right, let's top, top 10 reasons people go to Coachella. Johnny, right, number sur- 10. Survey taken uh, across the country. Top 10 reasons. Number 10 reason is because they can't get enough PTO to do a whole week at Burning Man. Oh. Yeah. That paid that? time off. No, that, I, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes uh, number sense. nine, because mm. they finally got their fire festival refund. Oh, 
didn't know that. That's pretty good. What yeah. do you think, Sinead? Interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, I got mine. You got yours. It's just store credit to the Jaw Rule website. But oh. I mean, you know, it's better than that. Everybody <laughs> needs some Jaw Rule heads, uh, hoodies, all that kind of stuff. Number eight, it's the only place where you could listen to Puddle of Mud while standing in a puddle of mud. Oh, you know who Puddle of Mud is? This this list is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of mud in Palm Springs. The survey may the have been trip. taken in 2001, whatever. A funny story about Puddle of Mud real quick. Mm. Uh, the night the Penguins won uh, their first of back-to-back Stanley Cups a few years back, we were downtown, and then we went to Barney's Beanery in West Hollywood, as you will, because it's my favorite bar to celebrate things. Sure. And uh, they're having karaoke. It's a Sunday night. Oh, and so I'm with, uh, my at that time, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, my brother, a couple of his buddies. My brother was in town for E3. and You and I probably sang Africa Toto. Uh, yeah, totally. Most likely. Oh, no, Rosanna. We were big I'm Rosanna. sorry. We're Rosanna yeah. guys. Yeah. And, uh, and so the song Puddle of Mud comes on. You know that song like, everything's so empty, I can't. This song. Wow, oh, listen yeah. to Cody. Yeah, he's on it. Cody knows some Puddle of Mud. Yeah. So <clears throat> guys start singing it. And I look at the guy. Oh, I hate this song. I look at the guy, <laughs> and I look to my brother. Keep playing it, Cody. You got it. I look to my brother. I look to Amanda, and I go, I think that's the lead singer of Puddle of Mud. No. And she and Amanda's like, that's not the lead singer. And then he just starts like, note perfect. And I was like, it's definitely the lead singer of Puddle of Mud. Pull him up on your phone. My brother's like, yep, that's him. The lead singer of Puddle of Mud sang his own song in karaoke to nobody requesting it. He was just there. Singing his what? own song that at Barney's is, Karaoke. That is yeah. the, one of the saddest things I've uh-huh. ever heard in my yep. life. Yeah, like one time we were at Barney's, right? And Extreme showed up. Okay, who sings like more than sure. words, right? You know that song. It's like an '80s kind of classic monster Wasn't ballad. It two dudes. It's two dudes. So yeah. they they were there, and I didn't recognize them. But the girl that runs karaoke, um, it's like I think here. Oh yeah, this is more than words. And Weird Al did a brilliant yeah. style parody of this called You Don't Love Me Anymore, and it's genius. Oh, yes. This, it's not that I yeah, love. Yeah, this, this is a very popular, like, karaoke song, though. Totally. Sure. But so Extreme was there. So the karaoke host is like, here, run this for a bit. I'm going to go talk to Extreme. And we convinced Extreme to come up and sing this song. Oh. But they did it with a guitar. Like, they, oh. they played the song at Barney's. They weren't Puddle of Mud just hanging around my side. Like, you know what? Karaoke, I'm going to do my own song. You guys remember it. You were at Vans Warp Tour in 1999. It was the shit. Do I get royalties for this? Come on. You guys know Barney's. You're welcome, Puddle of Mud. And that's not like... Imagine this guy just jamming out and the rest of the party's being like, I'm depressed. It's uncomfortable. It's un- It's Because when people do songs at karaoke that are like hard rock and they're like yelling about things, they're like, <laughs> Yeah. This it's song's not, really not, this a, song's not that bad. It's not but a crowd pleaser. Singing your own song is Ugh. the sad part. Yes. Can you imagine the bald guy from Disturb showing up <laughs> in his janitor onesie? I don't oh. think I could name a Disturb song. Can you get a good Disturb song out there? <laughs> Oh, that's that disturbed. One. Yeah, that was the 90s. All right, what do you got? Number six. A number, no, we're down to number seven. seven. Uh, because Vegas won't let you go barefoot. That's a oh. good reason to go to Coachella. Yeah, that makes sense. Coachella does let you go barefoot. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Did not know that. Uh, number six, specifically for the male 24 to 35 age range, uh, because you may work hard, but you play hard too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I think now it's more like the... 18 to 26 mm. age age. It's, it's gotten real young. Real young. It's like Lollapalooza. You go to Lollapalooza, I swear to God, everyone in there is under the age of 15. <laughs> wow. Why? What are their parents doing? If, my, if I ask my parents, okay, listen, did I pull a couple over on my parents? Yes. I mean, my mom, the first time that she was on Between the Sheets way back when, she's like, you're great, but you're a liar, right? So I would lie to them be like, yeah, I'm going to go to Collins Place. And then we'd go to oh, a yeah. concert in Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, Ooh. I do that all the time, too. I couldn't convince my parents that I was going like, to Coachella for two days. There's no, they would, and yeah, I would no. be too dumb to not post it on social media. If I'm a parent, I'm not letting my kid go into Coachella until he can make his own stupid decisions by himself. That's post 18. Yeah. That's when I'm done. Yeah. You're, I'm done. Yeah. Good. <laughs> See? <laughs> Whatever that song's called. Thanks, Cody. That I one. think it's called. I think it's like 20. That's the name. Yeah. It's ooh wah, ah, ah, you imagine Spell that for us. Tweet that. Oh, wow. like. Imagine him stomping into Barney's <laughs> on, a, on a casual Sunday. Yes. Do you think he enters the room and he does that every time? He totally. The room? Oh, my God. <laughs> he, like, walks into a PTA meeting and he's like, all right, hit it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> He, and all the parents are like, oh, damn it, this guy, this again. guy again. Sir, your son is breaking things in uh, class? Local city, coun- <laughs> local city council meeting. I have uh, some beef I've got to tell you guys, but before, 
None, none. Shane, you got one? Oh. No. I don't want. I don't want. To, I don't want to listen to that. Anymore. You don't want to hear it. It's like one of those things that makes me feel like like I'm sinking into the ground. <laughs> hey, honey, I'm home. Hey, it's honey, awful. I'm home. What was the other really sad band of that era? Um, Stained. No. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I like how you knew right away. What was the other sad band? <laughs> there were two words that didn't have, like, it wasn't disturbed ED. It was disturbed apostrophe yeah, D. Yeah. I do remember that. Stain but apostrophe D. You have, you have to understand, the only reason I know any of these songs now is because I listen to 98.7 and only mm. 98.7 now. Really? Yeah, because I just the listen Woody to show? The Woody Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so it's like... That's is your car broken? What? It has to stay on 98.7 just in case the Woody Show starts again? <laughs> no, because I'm so used to listening to the Woody Show that when I get in the car, I just keep 98.7 on. Uh, okay. Like, I just, I have no motivation to put on anything else. Interesting. Okay. That's a very bold, bold move. Who's Woody? I, Do, uh, Woody has a show in the morning on 98.7. It's, it's a very good radio show. It's very oh, good. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. the best great. one. You should listen to well, it. Well, my buddy hosts the Amp Warning Show, so I'm going to go with that. Oh, one. Amp 97.1 Amp Radio? Yes, yes. I support that. But Woody's great. I'm Woody's, sure. no, Woody's great. They have a podcast, too, so yeah. you can listen to that. Uh, I've, I've converted so many people. Even like my Lyft driver, not that long ago, he was like, um, he was listening to like Kiss FM, and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> and I, he, I just got him so. How was it? Can you do it for me? Sinead walks into Lyfts. <laughs> I yeah. would never in a million years make that sound. That sound would never come out of my body. Can you try and make it real quick? No. Do it. Come on. I don't for even... the fans. Do it for the fans. Come on, Sinead. Come on, Sinead. Come on. Do it okay, for play it one more time. Do it for Harrison. Okay. Do it for your son, Shame. I don't know how to come do on, it. Come on, come on. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I, I could make it. You got it, you got it, you got it. Wait, one more time. I don't I don't even know how to start it. Is he hitting a note first? I think you start with an ooh. It's an ooh. 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 Yeah! So good. You did so it. good. You did it. You did it. He she does it so high. Did. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Like that. What was oh, the songwriting? I hate that sound. I hate that sound. What was the songwriting process for him to do that? Uh, I believe... Uh, he stubbed he, his toe he, in the refrigerator? Correct. And, wow. It was or a local bird, it was like an angry bird. No, I bet he was like, oh, I've been working on something, you guys. <laughs> He's like, I was going to do the last time, I just didn't feel ready yet. Uh, uh. He's like, how about this? How about we start the song with something fresh, something new? <laughs> All right, here it is. <laughs> and Gold! Then he, and yeah. then he tripped down the stairs, and that's where he got the, oh, uh, oh. Uh. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. So Sinead gets into her lift and goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turn on the damn Woody show yeah. or else. And then at the end of the at the end of the ride, he was like, "This is this is so good." I th we were I was driving to the airport, so we listened to a good chunk of it. You should get some syndication there. You should get some. I royalties. know. And he was like, some "This is money. really good." And like literally, he was like, "I think I'm gonna finish this show this morning." And mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, I just I just turned it." Like he's he's a believer now. Like he he's listens. a Woody show. He's a Woody man. What, are, you, are you taking? A I'm video? doing a little video because it's so fun Nothing talking like about the guy from Disturbed <laughs> for 15 minutes. Is is stained? Cody, can you pick up like an intro of a stained song? Oh, it's it, so sad. So disturbed. It takes forever. Is stained the everlast? Oh, wait, no. The, oh, this is stained. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know this song yeah. too. And we're gonna now, cry. Here's a here's a f uh, fun fact, Cody. I'm gonna try and get it right this time. Christian Ruvalcaba's band in high school was called Blood Stained. Victory. I think oh it's Lord. a blood stained victory. A blood stained yeah. victory. Copser was in like a metal band. A blood stained victory? Yes. Ooh, that's pretty that's good, deep. right? It's yeah. deep. I remember seeing an interview with this, this song guy. This is depressing as shit, too. When they were in their heyday. It's all, it's all the same. And yeah. it was a sad interview where he said, the hardest part about singing in this band is these, these, these fans come up to me at shows and they think I have the answers for them and I don't. I'm like, calm <laughs> down, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus H. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, it's been a while since he had an answer or a hit song. Boom! See what uh, I did there? God. That's called good radio, Sinead. All right, we got a uh, uh, couple fifth, more. Your fifth reason. Fifth reason because the best way to discover new and upcoming bands uh, who will break up with financial and creative reasons before they make it big, but you could see oh, them there. Yeah, good call. Yeah. Good call. Uh, number four, because now you can finally prove that Lit and Buck Cherry are not the same band. That's important. Oh, Lit and Buck Cherry. Yeah, totally. No that is. Do you know what Lit is? Lit, you know the song to play, Cody. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he's got it. This is Cody's dream. I'm giving him punk and rock songs from the 90s and early 2000s Sweet. to jam on Collider Live. Can't wait till this episode gets flagged. It's going to be great. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> they, uh, Disturbed just started trending on Twitter, and they're going to come after us because nobody can. Thank you. Nobody can really play their song. So when, this is lit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boom. They had a couple ding, good ding, ones, ding. actually. They did. Uh, 
Oh, this uh, is great you jam. make me complete. You make me co- you uh, completely miserable. There you go. This, yeah. is, a, this is this is pretty good. It's one. a good riff. Yeah. This is a good way to start a song for sure. All right, qu- uh, four. Number three, three reason to quote the great Brody Stevens. Some people just enjoy it. I mean, look, it's subjective. There are people who believe Venom wasn't two hours of hot garbage. Good for them. Yeah, whoa, hot take. You're gonna get crushed yeah, in the oh, YouTube comments. There are some people who think season three of True Detective ah. was better than season well, one. Sinead, oh. coming in with oh. a. Hot take. Oh, wow. oh, there you go. Oh, that's the new hot take. There you go. Th- that's the Shanasty theme song. She walks into a room, open the door. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Oh, you that. don't like that? What, what would be your entry song then? What would you hit? I don't know. It's, it's been like, a while. I don't... <laughs> no, I think you hit I the wouldn't li- mind that, like even words from a song I don't like. That sound, I don't know why. It's like... But... <laughs> What if Harris? So Harrison's acting up at home, Uh-oh. right? Uh oh. And you just knock on the door, and he's like, "What? I'm listening to Ford commercials." And you're like, "Nope." And then, bang! In comes Shanasty, about to light the world on fire. I guess when you put it like that, see, it is kind of intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. You can, you can. All right. Final two. Uh, number two. <laughs> two words, all caps. Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith. He'll be there. Didn't even think about that. Jaden Smith. Is He'll he, be there. Is That's Will Smith's brother. Apparently he's there. Sir. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He's doing something. <laughs> he's, he's doing something. And the number one reason why people want to go to Coachella is the next host of Jeopardy should be Josh McCuga. That's the number oh, one answer, guys. Thanks, Look, guys. That's oh, just. That makes sense. That it's a, a great sense. survey. Yeah. It's a total great. Yeah. Thanks, Johnny. Very unbiased. I appreciate survey. you doing all that research for the show. And that is why I'm going because the next host of Jeopardy should be Josh Kukuka. <laughs> Thank you, and I'm going to give you some buttons Michelle. and some cards to really give out to people. Are to you give playing? Out the, the you're future. playing uh, stage seven. I am playing yeah. stage seven. Uh, I couldn't get six. It's really tough, but that's what happens at Coachella. Nobody really wants to hear trivia. They just want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's fun. Uh, I hope we, we started are, we're, something. We're going to take a break in about five minutes here, and then unfortunately, we have to uh, let Johnny go. But it was yeah. great having you on, dude. So good to be back. It really is. It's been, uh, a while. been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, man. It has. Sinead's, this is like the. This is like that song that I hate, but now it's. This is like you know, it's like I get certain like re- I have really weird reactions to music. It's uh-huh. the same way I can't listen to anything Coldplay. Yeah. Because mm. I, I literally feel like I'm dying, like actually dying. Do you, what, you or hate green, Coldplay? Yeah, I hate Coldplay. Interesting. Um, and like, um, what was it? Back in the day, too, there was another one. Uh, shoot. So I feel like it started with an N. They also had like really emo-y, sand, sad songs. Or like there was an N. Enya. No, it was like a <laughs> band. It was around the same time that Coldplay was really big. Like, Late '90s. Oh, uh, uh, Dashboard Confessional. No, I'll, I'll think of it. I'll look it up. Okay. Plain but white same teeth. Thing, same thing, like Coldplay and uh, anything Green Day. Yellow, like, yellow card. Me you, you don't like Green Day. <laughs> oh, but, but wait, hold on. The first album, Dookie. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he sounds. Wait, wait a second. What <laughs> about the song that every high school uses at graduation? Now? Yes. I hope you have the time. I hope you have the time. Like so that's, sad. How sound, that's how he sounds. Man, you guys are crushing me with it. Listen, the first episode, the first album, Another Green Day. <laughs> no, they're great. We're just saying it's sad. It's, you, it's we're actually ab- hitting the note pretty good. Yeah, but that's I, how, I literally, that's my impression of it. It's perfect. Yeah. And he has like little weird riffs that he thinks are good, but they're not. Mm. But I, it's like, like certain little clips or like lines or just songs in general. I mean, it's a it's a solid argument. You yeah. make a so good the, argument. So the wah thing <laughs> has the same effect on me. God, I hope we started something today. I think we may have. Yeah, I think we so may. Good. This this show, if if we're not nothing, if we don't have sound <laughs> clips, Cody knows this. Uh, we've got a billion of them, but I think we just created one. And Christian Harlow's gonna be really upset on Monday when I come in Christian, hot. Christian, you could blame me. I brought up disturbed. When I come in hot, there you go. Sorry. I come in with like three minutes left to go live, and I just. Oh, I like that. You should just do it over and over again right at the end. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And he's going to be upset. Christian doesn't like when things get messed around on his shows. And I like, more reason to do it. And I like to think that I'm kind of like the messer. I just like to really mess You're the up. literal button pusher. Correct. Yeah. yeah totally. Totally. Uh, All Cody right. has fallen asleep on the button. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Johnny, before we go, um, mm-hmm. listen, there's some Star Wars news we're going to talk about after the break. There was a new um, like uh, ad for Avengers. There's a, a new image for the new Ghostbusters movie. What? And uh, Sinead and I have been talking. I don't know if I want to watch more Avengers stuff because I don't want to be spoiled for it. Mm-hmm. Right. 
But you host, you're one of the hosts of uh, DC Movie News. Sure. And I want to get your reaction, because I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if Sinead has seen it. Can you sell us on Shazam? Because everybody's talking oh, about I've it. I've seen it. Oh, you saw it? I didn't see it yet. Can you tell me, like, can you just give me, like, a little. What do you think? I loved it. There okay. You go. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a perfect movie. Yeah. No. But I liked it a lot. And what do you yeah. think I'm going to think about it? Um. Oh, you're so specific. It's really Am hard I? to tell. I mean, am I specific? I don't know. I mean, like, he enjoyed season three of True Detective. Ah, so. Love the ending, apparently. One more burn. I need to get David Griffin to back me up on this one first. Here's the thing. Shazam, like what's this. great about it is it. you don't need to know a thing about the history, nothing about the comics. It's a, You could go and just sit down and say, let's see if I enjoy this. And you will get the story and you will really enjoy it. There's inconsistencies. I honestly didn't like Asher Angel very much. Okay. Um, I, Zachary Levi was fantastic. It just... It didn't seem like an older version of Asher Angel, whereas um, other characters I thought did a better job of, of, of consistency. But yeah, fantastic start to finish, super fun, very heartwarming, and um, uh, Mark uh, Strong, I think it is, Doctor yeah. Savannah, great. Okay. So yeah, I mean, this is really enjoyable. Uh, for me, Wonder Woman is still the one that really got my heart. Okay. But Shazam is like not too far behind. Interesting. Yeah. So like, I know Amanda wants to see Shazam really bad, and everybody keeps telling me you'll love it, you'll love you will, Shazam, I think you you'll will. love Shazam. But yeah, just... you'll you'll like it. Okay. You yeah. Will. I think Wonder Wonder Woman's a a better made movie okay. overall. Um, and this... what has a better ending, Wonder Woman or Shazam? Oh boy. I love I the ending of Shazam. It's like yeah. so it's so funny. It's like cheesy and like it in, in a good I love way. Cheesy. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. But like the thing about Shazam was like the same issues I have with all DC movies, mm-hmm. I also had with Shazam too, just like not as much. Okay. Because the actual movie itself was still good. So I was able to forgive some of the mm-hmm. I, I've all I've always tried to figure it out, but I think like between because I also really liked Suicide Squad. I was like I feel like that was the only person on planet Earth that yeah. liked that oh, movie. I, I actually really enjoyed Suicide Squad. Yeah, like, really Besides did. like the dancing Cara Delevingne, yeah. I thought it was a really fun. Movie. Right. Well, that part was like Weird. I laugh out loud. Yeah. I was like giggling in the movie theater. She like, looked exactly like my waiter at Cafe Gratitude. I <laughs> swear to God, so in that funny. Scene. All that we that all those eyebrows. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, she does have fantastic eyebrows. They are. Yeah. On another planet, they, they are, are the amazing. Coachella of eyebrows. Yeah. Shazam's a lot of fun, but yeah, Gal Gadot is just so perfect. Like when yeah. you watch her in Wonder Woman, it's like oh yeah. god. I and love like you. the movie yeah. Wonder Woman's very like it's polished, it's clean. Um, whereas like Shazam and like every other DC movie that's a been of recent, like right. recently, um, I feel like has like these weird, like I don't know if it's. I think it might just be the way it's edited. If I'm being Could honest, be. because the acting in a lot of the movies like it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be weird, but right. like sometimes it just seems weird. And I, d- I like there's writing issues here and there, but I honestly think that they edit their movies really weirdly. What DC does? Yeah, like Could Suicide be. Squad was edited really, really bizarrely. I agree with that yeah, one. Yeah, I think that was just the. Yeah. Um, it it's just like pay, jumpy. It, it just doesn't make sense. It paid mm. great homage to Philadelphia though too, which I really yeah. appreciate. Oh, yeah, nice. so you're gonna of you're course. gonna like it. Okay. And I I mean I loved Asher Angel to be honest with you. I, there's to me there's there two kids came in. They were great. They were really nice. Yeah, there to me there was nothing. Jack and Asher. Nothing wrong with the acting at mm. all. Like, no. yeah, and, and it's. Funny. I just didn't like it's his character. Really, like... yeah, you know, it's really funny. Like, okay. it's really, really funny. All right. Well, yeah. I'm excited now, even more than I was before. And I know the misses. Uh, is what's one of those superhero movies? I know if a movie's gonna do decently well, if Amanda wants to see it, if like it's usually in my realm, yeah. like a nerdy superhero, like a comedy kind of thing, yeah. like she wants to see You'll it. Well, it, she wants okay. to see it because Zachary Levi is so sexy. <laughs> He's a handsome That's man. Exactly. People, Very nice guy too. I got my SAG card working on Chuck like years ago. Oh, uh, nice. I, people call me the Zachary Levi of Pittsburgh. So. That's fair. Oh, Maybe they do people? really. Yeah. Do they really? Yeah, because every time I walk into Pittsburgh, they play this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <You're so laughs> <laughs> you can hear him in the background. Yeah, uh, I was. Uh, I think in like 2007, the uh, Pittsburgh Post Gazette came out, and this was like, "This is the Zachary Levi of Pittsburgh." And I was like, "Oh, thanks." That's wow, such a sweet that's thing. so nice. I know, right? That is. They throw a parade for you. <laughs> they did. It's How like did you not Betty everywhere? How it did was you a not Betty parade? You should have framed that article. Uh, yeah, I think my parents have it somewhere. It's you know they put the Ben stuff up first because yeah. my brother's the love. They, they one. got it laminated and they. Put it on the wall. Oh, <laughs> it on the no wall. one laminates anything anymore. I know. My mom was a teacher. She laminated everything. Oh, I love laminating things. Oh, it's great. It's a very satisfying activity. Yeah, it's really good for my OCD. And, oh. we, and we're going to laminate some more stuff. After this break, oh, this I is say, Collider Live. Can Johnny I say one Le- thing? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, this Wednesday, April 17th, I'm headlining the Irvine Improv, but also you can see Jay Washington and Jen Sturger. I know if you love the Schmodown, you love both of them. Click the link in my bio on my Instagram. You can sign up for free tickets at, at Jay Quasto. Nice. At Jay Quasto on yeah. Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Uh, dude, I love you like a brother. You know love that? Yeah, and uh, thanks for thanks coming for on. Me. You're great. And great work on that top 10 Coachella list. Yeah, Look, excellent. This is Collider Live. We will see you guys after the break.
Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening. We've got some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show that I host with Jack Hind, that's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams. All those things are happening here at Collider. And, look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen. We want you to watch if you're a sports fan. Even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them. And then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now. That's as far out as we'll go, uh, or cricket, but uh, maybe in the future, if we go Collider Worldwide, that's certainly a possibility, but for right now, Collider Sports is there for you. Take a look at it, take a watch, and let us know what you think. Oh, hi guys, it's Perry here, and I am going to tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh. Hello, Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro, and we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. And it is all of the things we love about movies, TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. So we talk about the stuff that's coming out, we talk about what we hope is coming out, we do fantasy casting of things that should exist, why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things, and every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics, buy and print, we have a comic pull list where our five Boom. biggest favorite books of the week come out, and we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital, okay. I'll forgive you, as long as you're paying for your comics, it's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics yeah. are like certain things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print, keep Watch comic stores alive. Or we can you debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting, we can Watch debate movie, movie news. We can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try and we to can catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff. We want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have on special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right, the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed, Jesus. and later on Collider Video's own podcast Jesus. video network. So Man, check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, everyone. John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Yay! Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media what topics are burning up social media that's what we do on collider sports okay. time i'm joined by my top 10 co-host okay. matt nost me and him we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about nfl the major league baseball playoffs nhl and the nba which is starting up soon we're going to talk about that we also get into ufc stuff college football 
all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Oh, we're back. Hey guys, we're, live. we're live. We're live. We're live. We were watching the Wine Country trailer, a Netflix movie starring Amy Poehler, Maya Rudolph, Rachel Dratch, uh, a couple other it's actresses in there. I, listen, uh, Amy Poehler can do no wrong in my yeah. eyes. Uh, Parks and Rec is one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, and this looks awesome. Uh, a Netflix movie. You guys can go to Collider.com. Check that out. Uh, we're going to get into some movie news. Uh, we've also got, you know, Sinead and I's uh, upcoming heated argument on TV Talk later today. The episode will air tomorrow. We also have an interview with Caleb Worthy on that episode from uh, Hulu's The Act. Are you watching The Act on Hulu? Caleb Worthy. Um, Caleb Worthy. Why does that sound so familiar? So he was uh, no, in I American have... Vandal. If you'd seen him. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's because I know him from a Disney Channel TV oh, show. Oh, correct. Yeah. yeah, he was on Disney Channel. Uh, uh, Austin and Allie okay. for like years and years. Yeah. Um, he was he was great. He came in studio to interview about the I act. I think you would like seen, the act. I know. I That's next. Yeah. That's really, that's next. But I know it's like, it's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. It's creepy. It's, I mean, it's Patricia Arquette. She's not exactly yeah. doing like lighthearted comedies, like episodes of Last Man Standing or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, so that's coming up on TV Talk. To, uh, it airs tomorrow. Then we've got all that stuff in Chicago this weekend. So if you're a Collider Live fan and you see us, come up and say hello. Uh, if you're going to the Schmodown on Saturday, can't wait to see you. I'm doing, you know, half hour, 45 minutes of crowd warm up before the Schmodown with Frank Janish. We're going to hand out a bunch of stuff, throw out some free prizes. And also Friday night, if you're in Chicago and you're going to the Mark Ellis Show, please, uh, we'd love to see you. Hang out. Um, it's going to be a blast that whole weekend, Friday, the 7 and 10.30 shows. He's taping his hour special. It's going to be fantastic. And again, at the Athenium Theater on Saturday night. And if you see all those people around uh, the convention center, I'm not going to actually be at the convention. I'm not going to the convention. I don't have a pass. Which is totally fine with me. A pass would be wasted on somebody like me because I like the Star Wars movies, but I'm not this the diehard fan that I think the uh, the Star Wars fan would want to hear from on this kind of stuff. I'm You're at, not a diehard Star Wars. Fan. I love it. I love the movies, but I don't know really anything about the lore and you know what people hate about the movies and all of the the fan theories and all yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've never been able to dive into that kind of stuff because oh, interesting. Uh, I just I I. I loved the movies so much that, I mean, the funny story is when I started working at Collider, started working in the space with schmoes, whatever, everybody hated on the prequels. And I was yeah. like, what? I, yeah. like, I like those movies. That, I, that's also like one of my first memories about starting at AMC Movie Talk. Yeah. I was like, okay, so we don't talk about the prequels here. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, what? I, I enjoyed the prequels. So I think that my overall fandom, which uh, you know we talked about in the first hour of the show, is I'm very surface level. I hate movies that try and like hit me over the head with symbolism. I hate movies that try and be like way smarter than me. Yeah. Now, um, listen, am I the smartest guy in the room? No. Do I think I'm intelligent? Sure. I graduated <laughs> college. Okay. I went to a Division One university. Yeah. I mean, that's more than I did, so. <laughs> it's more than my wife did, too. But don't tell her I said that. She's calling in later. And uh, so, I, but I won't go to the convention floor. I, would, I wouldn't mind going on Friday to see it, but I'm working on a, a, a project right now. And I'm going to be pretty much working all day on Friday. I also want to watch the Masters. So that's going to be going on in the background. Masters, first day of the Masters start right now. It's a golf tournament in Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, thrilling. Thrilling. I mean, golf is my favorite thing to watch on TV. I know. I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, I know. You know. A lot of people But don't. now I really don't know what to think anymore anyways about your <laughs> viewing choices and what you I like. I can't and... believe you didn't like the season. I tried yeah. to get David Griffin to call. He's actually boarding his flight right now, so he can't call in to you should back just ask him. Well, like, let me ask him. Did you just like, ask him. Did you like True Detective season did three? You like... If so, is it your favorite season? <laughs> I, it, it, you can't retract it, that. You already said it. I, <laughs> <laughs> no take backs. <laughs> uh, You're like, I did it. I only said a little bit more. I might. I only said I might like it more. I did, I'm not stepping back on those it. Are, those are serious words. I True think Detective Season 1 is the greatest television show, I think, to have ever been on TV in that, in that kind of okay, genre. I'm not going to disagree with you. Yeah, I'm not going to really? disagree with you. Really, because you just did. <laughs> I, but I'm I'm putting season three right in with season one. That, that is I loved un- it. <laughs> We're going to get into this on TV talk. That's what you call a tease, I'm ladies so and pissed. gentlemen. I'm so you aren't pissed. that pissed, uh, David Griffin? <laughs> yeah. 
I did! Exclamation point. Okay. Not as good as one, no, but well, way better than two. Well, yeah. The, okay. Everybody would say that. Okay. 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 Do okay. you wow. see that? Wow. Not wow. as good as wow. one. Hey, uh, Cody, I believe coming in hot uh, for True Detective Season 3, my entrance song should be... Oh, God. <laughs> you are welcome, America. That's funny. I will say... Um, before we get into some movie news and some fun news here is I miss you. I think that uh-huh. you're amazing and I miss having you on shows all the time. Uh, I know you're doing amazing things right now and it's it's a real pleasure to have you here in studio. When they told me I was going to host um, Collider Live when everybody was in Chicago, I said there's only one person I want on the show. It's Sinead DeFries. Thanks. So, I miss you too. It's, uh, well, we hopefully a, we'll start seeing each other soon. I know. We've been yeah. trying to work on some different things. And yeah, things are in the works. been talking to your sister about some things uh, yeah. who I've tried to get on the show today and she promptly said no. Hell no. She would never. She'd be like, mm, no. No. I was like, why don't you just hang out in the studio? You don't have to actually talk into the microphone. She said no. No, she won't. <laughs> not even a chance. No. Man, Kel.co, she's a she's a tough cookie, but I like her. You know, great. she's you know she like when I ask her to do anything, I'm like, hey, can you do this video with me? You know, so I know that yeah. she would say this to both of us. She'd mm-hmm. be like, I'm too busy working on your careers uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> to sacrifice. Because that's literally what she told me. She's like, if we're leaving for Palm Springs, I'm getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Because so I was like, can you drive me to the Audi dealership? She's like, no, I'm too busy working on your career and everybody else's career to drive to the Audi dealership. And I was like, that's fair. Yeah, that's I think fine. that I annoy your sister with text messages. Just like, can I go for this? Can you do this? Can I go this? Okay. Sorry, I do Kelly. too. Yeah, sorry, I do Kelly. too. Should have never given me your <laughs> Because she don't, she never answers emails, but she answers texts. Yeah, oh, I get it. Yeah, but she's like, emails she's, are tough. She's constant. I like, know. I know. It's next level. I know. And she I, does read everything because sometimes I'll be like, "Hey, I emailed you about something like seven hours ago." Yeah. And she'll be like, "Yeah, I read it. I already did it." But she's a super professional person. Yeah. You know, she's she is. unlike you and me. Who are just here to talk and not like <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, we just watched that uh, sort of part of the Wine Country trailer mm-hmm. on Netflix, which just, I love Netflix w- originals, though. Me I too. love all of the Netflix original movies, even the corny ones like A Christmas Prince and A Christmas Inheritance. I watched a bunch of those like a couple weekends ago. Kind of reminds me of like an elevated Lifetime movie. You totally. Know? It is super, super cheesy, and some of them are bad. Yeah. But like they're all still entertaining. I'm going to, I'll throw a bomb out there right now. Woke up this morning and, you know, you turn the TV from whatever you fell asleep to the night before or whatever. Season three. It was on there, yeah. I was psyched about the finale, too. Sick. So just sick. re-watching the finale just, every yeah. night. Babe, I told you this was good. Um, the Prince and Me was on the Julia Stiles movie oh, with the yeah. Danish Prince when they were at college yeah. in Wisconsin. And I turned it on in about 20 minutes. I was doing a workout in 20 minutes and Amanda comes in and she goes, are you watching The Prince and Me? <laughs> Yeah, That's it was. Funny. Yeah, it was. It's a cla- I Listen, I had the biggest crush on Julia Stiles from. Oh, she was. Yeah, I remember like Save the Last Dance. Oh, awesome. And nobody, nobody ever knows who I'm talking about when I talk about her. But is it? No. Wasn't she on a show? Uh, or isn't she on a show now? Uh, or what? Like she was on a really big show. But I just don't um, think she like she kind of fell off the radar. She's directing a lot of stuff now. But which she was. Is she cool. had a TV show that was like it was doing well. I hold think. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's I just see. can't remember what it was. Cody, you have anything on this? The it's Julia like Stiles US, TV show. It was like show? USA or something, or like one of those. Started with a Z and the second. Word also started with a Z. I want to say Julia Style. Yeah, you know what show I'm talking about, Josh? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I think I missed that show. Sure. Yeah. Two Z's. Um, <laughs> Riviera. Uh, Riviera had I, ten I episodes. I forget it, Cody. Mm. It's. I don't know if you guys remember. Okay. <laughs> she was on Blue, and also the Mindy Project. <laughs> That one queued up for weeks, and I've had no reason to use it. So thank God you finally said blue. That was the fastest reaction ever. I know. He was just like, ah, ah, ah. The <laughs> one said blue. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, I mean, she was on Dexter for ten episodes. I remember her on Dexter. She was great in the Bourne movies. I do remember her from the Bourne movies. Yeah, yeah she was. She was good in the Bourne movies. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like she was on a show. But maybe I'm confused. It's, there's this movie, there's a show called Riviera, and she was Georgina Cleos. For how many seasons? Like, it was, was it recent? It was 10 episodes. Oh, then no. But she, all of the epi- all the things are in French, it looks like. I was s- it a French I show? I swear. Are you on her IMDb? Yes. Oh, then I don't know. I got nothing. Anyway, uh, so I was watching The Prince and Me, but I, I love a, a good guilty pleasure of those yeah. kind of movies. Here we go. We're going to talk. So uh, Mark Hamill came out and said, beware. People are going to get Star Wars fatigue. And like, I w- what What does he mean by that? Like, beware. Because. Like, it's going to happen? Or he thinks, like, Star Wars celebration is going to be smaller? No. He, th- he thinks that with all of the Star Wars content coming out, people are going to start getting into Star Wars fatigue. What's Star Wars content? Like, the new stuff? So there's going to be a Benioff and Weiss who do Game of Thrones. Right? They're going to do a trilogy. But isn't that, like, uh, that's not going to happen for a while. A little while. You've got episode nine this December. Right. Right? Which is, who knows if that's going to wrap up the, the saga, right? We don't know if there's going to be right. a episode 10, but 11. 
11, 12, right. whatever. Because mm, okay. they're not going to just do a 10. They're going to do a 10, 11, 12. You have to come out in threes, I think, in the yeah. Star Wars world. And yeah. again, I'm 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 not Christian Harloff on this one. So, But then they've got the Mandalorian series, yeah. which is coming out on Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's also not going to be till what, next year? Or I th- maybe I, it was maybe it was fall of this year. I believe today or Sunday. I think is the Mandalorian really panel. It's the panel at oh, Star Wars panel. Celebration, and they're going to show a trailer. Yeah, I think it was. If I remember correctly, I remember it was going to be one of the first shows on Disney Plus. I think that's what they're launching with. They're launching yeah. with the Mandalorian to hopefully get all those people because you know now on Disney Plus you're getting right. a Hawkeye series, you're getting a Loki series, you're getting a Scarlet Witch so series. Smart. On it. I know. So smart I mean, of them. They're not. Those people aren't going to get full movies. And, right, they're like, oh, but, we have all these billions sitting around. What should we do? Yeah, because like now, I was like, I guess do, I have to get Disney Plus. Right, I know, I wasn't gonna get it. They're like, I, oh, you can. They're putting all the Avengers movies on there, all the Marvel movies on there, and all the Disney movies on there. And I was like, man, it's fine. And they're like, oh yeah, and also this. Star Wars, and then also um, all of these like one-off things. Avenger and I'm like, one-offs, and it could be. You know, I mean, everybody keeps talking about Disney Plus getting the rights to things like Daredevil and Luke Cage, yeah, and our yeah. favorite. One Iron Fist, who I believe entered most episodes with. Oh, God. I wish. I wish he did that much. <laughs> Probably would have been a better <laughs> show. Uh, I, I, I always feel bad crap talking that guy so much because we destroyed him. Yeah. Like, we destroyed him. Yeah. I, of, I all the him actors, <laughs> of all the actors in the history of the first iteration of TV Talk, he was the only one that we legit just raked over the You coals. know what? He brought it on himself. <laughs> You're right. And I still, re- I still remember to this day, you were like, yeah, it's the guy from Game of Thrones. Oh, it's going to be great. He was the guy from Game of yeah, Thrones. Yeah, but he wasn't he like someone's cousin or something? Sort of. And like, he didn't have that big of a, you know. <laughs> he was like the guy, I mean, he he was Loras Tyrell, so he got, he was gay, and then he, they threw him in the dungeon because he was banging dudes, and it was against the, um, the, the seven, it was against the religion kind of a thing. A lot of people have been asking, are you going to bring back the synopsis, which we can tease on TV Talk, which will be on later today, that will air tomorrow. Just we- do it! <laughs> See? See? Cody knows. Yeah. Uh, so, Mark Hamill's saying this. He al- he also said, it seems like there's a lot of, and I could tell them that, but they don't listen to anything I say anyway, which was kind of a shot at Lucasfilm slash oh, Disney. Weird. Because a lot of, he was really upset about how in Force Awakens, he was only in the end getting handed a lightsaber. He didn't like in, in Last Jedi that he was a f- ghost the whole time, or a, a phantom uh, Tupac hologram at at uh, Coachella, but if I'm gonna go with Mark Hamill on this one for a second, I really liked the Solo movie, and I was kind of bummed that nobody else did, because <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. I I didn't hate it. Mm-hmm. I but that's not the reaction you want from a Star Wars movie. No, yeah. I just like, I just, for me, Rogue One is so effing fantastic. It's my favorite Star Wars movie. I've watched that movie like more times mm-hmm. than I've watched a lot of movies it's in my great. life. It's like, it's so It might so be the perfect good. prequel. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Like, it's actually perfect. And it's so like, um, it's so grounded too that it works. Totally. Like, it just works. Like, I've, I've been confident being like, watch this movie, don't get turned away from it just because it says Star Wars and yes. think that you have to have seen all of these other movies to understand because it's just so fantastic. Like right. it's it's incredible. It's, it's so pretty much perfect movie. It's just, it's hard when you, I have that always in my head. Where mm-hmm. Rogue One's one that I, it'll be like a random Wednesday and I'm like, Ooh, I guess I'll just watch Rogue One. <laughs> like I'm not even kidding. Oh, Friends? No, I'll just go Rogue yeah, One. Yeah, I'm like, it's, it's one of the two. Like yeah. I've watched it so many times, so it's just hard. Like Solo was fine. The acting was fine. Do you um, like Alden Ehrenreich? Yeah, like everything was fine. I wish that, you know, what they were doing, everything was fine. Okay. Actors who I think are great actors were fine. Donald Glover, great. And it, yeah. You still watching Atlanta? No. Mm. No, I have to catch up. Yeah. Um, but I just, my only issue with Solo was that I felt like they, like, um, Solo, Harrison Ford Solo is, it should be untouchable. I agree. He had created a character, blah, blah, blah. Same and like I feel Harrison like, Ford's Indiana Jones. Right. It's just like one of those things that like, you see now, it's not just the writing. It's not. It's Harrison Ford. Harrison it's Harrison Ford. Ford as Solo. So it's like, I think that the movie would have been so much better because that was at the forefront. And it really was like he was, it was a star, like a lead, a leader yeah. movie, right? There's one person leading the whole movie. And I feel like it would have been so much better had they just stopped trying so hard to try to explain like this guy um, getting all of his quirks and right. and like that's that we didn't even need any of that the Wait, chewy too- stuff was the most interesting thing like when they're in the little uh, underground thing yeah, I like that that's like actually for me one of the one of the best parts of the movie sure and if they would have just like been like more authentic and just like focused on that because that's a story we don't we didn't know you know how they met so like put some more focus into like those like things and 
him becoming who he is, not him getting the personality that he has. I, I, that makes sense. No, I totally agree with you because because it took away from it. There are there are few movie stars in history that have the charm and charisma right. as Harrison Ford. Yeah, right? like anything. You can take away all the stuff when he was like, I'm already working around the clock. That was older Christian, er, older Harrison Ford. Yeah. Harrison Ford in his prime was probably the most charming man to ever right. grace a screen. Yeah. Not many people can pull off Indiana Jones, which no. is supposed to be serious, yet funny, and like, yet entertaining, so but like also smart. And like still be like the smart. biggest ass on the planet. Correct. Yeah. He's supposed to be the biggest ass on the planet, but somehow you're just like, ugh, like you can't, he's a- it's Harrison Ford. And like charm and charisma is like a, it's, it's different for every person. Everybody has different charm. So that's like- I just wish they wouldn't have tried to channel Harrison Ford charm because it it was obvious to me. And I don't know why. I just it just didn't sit well. I didn't like it that much. Okay. All right. I'll give it to you. But I back to Mark Hamill real quick. I I don't see myself getting Star Wars fatigue no, me neither. just yet. Yeah. Okay. Um so I don't know if you watched this the science of Game of Thrones. Did you did you like read this article on Clatter.com? So it talks a lot about uh, like ten things that the si- like the actual science of Game of Thrones mm-hmm. proves wrong I that like an ice wall can't exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually did. Maybe I did vaguely, did, or maybe I saw it on Twitter or something. Okay. posted on Twitter or something. The the best one I got out of that one is that the dragons can't fly unless they have super bones, <laughs> right? Like right. normal bones. Obviously, we're in a fantasy world. I get it, but I never thought about because I'm watching the season finale of last year. I've been catching up on Game of Thrones uh, as much as people never want me to talk about Game of Thrones again on any review shows. I watched all of last season again. I watched a bunch of the seasons, whatever. And you notice when Daenerys gets off the dragon in the finale, and he's, she's talking to Cersei and all that kind of thing. When the dragon takes off, he's yeah, going like this, and things are kind of like blowing around. But really and truly, if that dragon goes like this. People would be flying. Everywhere. Oh, absolutely! Right, like she can't. That that actual physics of a dragon taking off would light somebody up. Right. Okay. So, I'm thinking to myself, okay. So now when I see dragons, I'm like, oh, so they have super bones. Not only can they breathe fire, but they have super bones because without them, they wouldn't be able to fly to pick up. Because there's a bird out there, and it says to be like the the best bird or dinosaur in the world, but it was only like 400 pounds, and it had big wings. So those dragons are like 30,000 pounds. Yeah. Which was, uh, was an interesting thing. So you can check that on Collider.com. That's funny. Also, that the ice wall would have just been an ice ramp by the end because it just like would start falling out. Yeah. Even in the coldest of places, the yeah. ice wall would fall, which is kind of a bummer. I hate looking into those things because I hate being like told that I'm wrong thinking about the fantasy of it. I don't know if you're like that. Well, I mean, like with the show with, like Game of Thrones, right. most of the time I'm like, no, this is ever possible. <laughs> you know? Sure. I'll give you <laughs> like, that. No, I mean, like the, the dragon was like zombified at the end. So it's just yeah. like. Everything is like fantasy, so I never ever think past that. Okay, do you ever do you think that Game of Thrones is taking place right now in an, like an opposite world, or do you think it's like fifty thousand years ago? When when you think about like oh, the I time think about... of Game of Thrones. Oh, that's a good question. Because yesterday, Roxy Stryer and I do a show called Hypothetical Questions on the Collider TV Talk feed, and she was like, "I just always thought that Game of Thrones was taking place now; it was just in a different world." Oh, I would never think it was taking place presently. Okay. If anything, I would think it's like a post-apocalyptic mm. type of thing. But then I don't understand okay. where the dragons came from. Truth. But the reason why I, th- I think most people think of it, I might be wrong, but I think most people think of it as being in the past yeah. is because these animals and things like that had a likelier chance <laughs> of being alive back then. See, this is why I don't think about See? these things like this because it takes the fun out of it. I'm sorry. I'm like, well, if you think about it, like d- dinosaurs, maybe they evolved a little bit differently in this fantasy world and they turned into dragons. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll give it to you. But like also, like, can we just take a moment to be grateful that dragons don't exist anymore? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because that would effing suck. Okay. So you have your choice of either a like riding a dragon or being able to fly. Oh, well, I have a bird phobia, so <laughs> we don't, I feel like we've talked about this. I did not know this. Do you hate pigeons? Oh, I hate all birds. Oh, okay. Pigeons I'm not, are disgusting. I don't like birds at all I, We've talked about this because yes. you also said I don't like birds, and no. I told you about the story. My parents took me to the International House of Birds. Remember? IHOB. <laughs> it's actually called World of Birds. It's in South Africa, and they took me when I was like six. <laughs> and this giant, this giant bird landed on my head. And started clawing at my scalp, <laughs> and yeah, because the birds fly freely. They're what? not, yeah, and it and it would try to lift me off the ground. My parents say that that last part's an exaggeration, <laughs> but I know what it felt like. I was like six years old. I remember like it was yesterday. I remember it vividly, and I cannot to this day stand the sound of like wings, like yeah, no, that. 
and I just also I hate birds like the way they look. Oh yeah. But my sister tells everybody it was a pigeon that landed on my head, and I get so pissed off because she's like, it was a freaking pigeon. But actually, my dad two days ago. My dad told everybody. Do you he hear was the like, bird sounds in the background? <laughs> yeah, of I hear it. It's beautiful, Cody. Yeah. My dad was like, no. It's awful sounds. It's My dad was like, no, it was like an eagle. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. No wonder Somewhere to this day. A pigeon, an eagle, and a dragon <laughs> landed on your head. All right. I'm going to. Uh, terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> I'm just imagining you as like a, but when that bird landed on your I head. I was a very small child. <laughs> <laughs> Six years old is, that's a formative year. Right. You know how, I'm like shorter than all of my friends. I'm yeah. like five foot three. Uh-huh. I was, I've always been short. <laughs> yeah, something happened to me. It's like both of, both my siblings, my brother's 10 years younger than me and he's got like an entire head on me. Like it's insane. <laughs> is Kelly a lot taller than you? Yeah, she's like five, seven. Oh man. Which is like not like super tall, but it's no. normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, three. It's, I mean, it's small, but it's not tiny. I, I peaked at like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> you hit that peak at twelve. I was like super, like tall and normal for like an eighth grader, but and so, I was like, and all of a sudden everybody kept growing, and I just stopped. Damn. Yeah. But then you, but you're six and you're tiny, and you have a bird on your head. It, kind of, it probably flew in, Cody, and you know what I mean. It flew in, landed on her head, and went. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was and good. then and then you saw it, and it, c- it could have lifted you off the ground. It, it thought I was its prey. Oh my god! I thought it w- was taking me back to the nest to feed its kids. <sighs> I'll tell you what. Um, so, <laughs> welcome, children. This is Sinead. Isn't she lovely? Don't worry. She'll take Instagram pictures with you guys later. It's no big deal. Fashion Nova. Um, so uh, this is big. Okay, we've taken our first picture ever of a black hole. They've been trying to yes, do this crazy. forever. Cody, do you have the picture of the black hole? We took a picture of it. This is it's the type of thing that really dynamic. keeps me up at night. Yeah. It is because it's now sucking in planets and whatever. It's 50 million light years away. But here is There the, it is, that the, big black box. The big black box. <laughs> the, there it is. That's the black hole that we've been trying to get different. They had like some seven or eight super space cameras able to capture this. It's 50 million light years away in some other galaxy that's named after the actress from The Killing. Um, I believe it's Mirie Ennis. And it's kind of like if the demon was pregnant with the baby, that would be like the little and the womb. Yeah, that would like if a demon was pregnant with a baby, uh-huh. that would be like the uterus, and then that little like light part would be like the embryo. I could birthing. see that. Can totally. you see that? Yeah, I can totally see that. That's that's one of those creepy, uh, you know, ultrasound pictures you get. Yeah. But you're like, hey, your baby's a demon black hole. Yeah. Like, oh, that's with why the, my stomach with the hurts. little light right there. That's the embryo. No, I can see it. I can see it. And then around it is like the placenta. Or like the embryonic sac. Too, too far, Josh. Do I go too, too far? far. Yeah. For those watching at home, for those, for those listening at home. <laughs> I think placenta is one of those you trigger words. You had to say placenta. <laughs> the placenta comes out and immediately. <laughs> <laughs> You can hear him. He gets so disappointed when he's not right on the button. <laughs> I don't know, Cody, if you're feeling how fun that sound bite is, but it's pretty damn good. That's funny. Uh, um, but that's crazy. These are the things that keep me up at night. It's so holes. just like anything in space that is like un. It's still to this day like we can't explain it. It's just like so far away. And the fact that we're getting closer and closer to explaining it, I'm just like whoa. And I start thinking about you know a hundred years from now, or even when Harrison is like 75. Like what would they have what? taken pictures of by then? I know. And what are, what what is the world? I I do have anxiety. This is why I don't smoke weed anymore. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't eat weed. I can't smoke weed because I legitimately start getting so yeah. paranoid oh, about. I, the future. I, I think we've talked about this before. And yeah. I was, you were like, do you smoke? And I was talking about my anxiety, remember? Yes, you were yeah. like, do you smoke? And I was like, no, because like I, it has the opposite effect on me. Totally. Like it doesn't help my anxiety. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel like the entire world knows I'm yes. high. Yep. Everybody. <laughs> and I was like, my my mother in law for Christmas this year got me a vape pen and I was like this is useless because yeah. I'm not going to get. And the, this is the type of thing that ooh, if I was high I would never be able to look at or talk no, about ever. No, because this uh, black holes and I I went to the JPL the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and if you have you ever gone. The what? The Jet Propulsion Laboratory in I Pasadena. The Jeopardy Laboratory. I was like, no. okay, we're getting <laughs> we're a little, little ridiculous. Too <laughs> so you go to the laboratory, and there's Alex Trebek. Uh, <laughs> and what is chemistry? Um, no, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It's in Pasadena. It's oh. it's where they uh, built and created the Mars rover. Oh. And then you know they ship it off or whatever, and that's yeah, yeah. exact. That's where mission control of the Mars rover is. So you oh, can nice. go. So I went to wait. Inter- that's in Pasadena. Pasadena. That's like my neck of the woods. I know you could take Harrison. Maybe he was a little bit older. Yeah, uh, he wouldn't care about that right now. No, but it, when he's a little bit older, it's really really cool. I was yeah. I, I, and you know me, I ask really stupid questions, right? So uh, what happened is uh, Jonathan Nolan, who wrote 
Interstellar with oh, Christopher yeah. Nolan. That's right. Christopher Nolan directed it, and then this this super famous astrophysicist. I had to interview them. <laughs> Okay. What? About the science of interstellar. I was like, oh my God. Schmo's got the invite. And I was like, I'm going to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. We got the VIP treatment. We got to see things that no other people could see. They oh, took us amazing. all around. It was incredible. They were showing us the parachute of how they're trying to get a spaceship to land on Mars and it like catches on fire. That's so cool. Yeah. So I think I would have done it for that, all that too. I totally. used to be obsessed with space when I was a kid. I, I always just wanted to go to space camp based solely on that like gyroscope thing yeah and I, I think that's a, an American boardwalk. thing because yeah. like everyone I talked to was I was like I wanted to go to space camp but I'm like what is this space camp you, <laughs> you didn't about? have space camp without that yeah idea. and it just makes me think of that Friends episode where <laughs> Ross breaks the girl's leg <laughs> Mae Whitman he breaks Mae Whitman's leg Mae Whitman that's good call nice <laughs> yeah. catch yeah so so um, we're at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory right and I'm asking the normal questions about the movie what does this help and then I go guys We've never seen a black hole. We don't know if black holes exist. We've never even seen one. How can you create science around it? And they both looked at me like, this freaking guy. And they went into the science of the black hole. And then I, they said, do you get it? And I said, I have less idea than I have now. Fast forward, they did a full press conference for like all the workers at the JPL. And they started talking about black holes and all this kind of stuff. And I said, I raised my hand. I said, are we ever going to get to a black hole? Will we ever have the ability to get to a black hole. And the room went pin drop silent. Basically, I was insulting the, all of their entire careers because I said, oh, is there ever going to be a chance when we're ever going to get to see any of this? Like, does this all just seem kind of useless? And I got, I mean, the evil eyes I got from dudes that thought that I was the bully in high school that pushed him into lockers, which I was never that guy. I was never a bully by any means. Basically, it was just like, listen, nerds, I don't know what the hell is going on. Are we ever going to get to see a black hole? Is Matthew McConaughey ever going to get sucked into a black hole to another planet to start a new you, whatever? In the bookcase. In, in the bookcase. <laughs> is that ever going to happen? And And they all were like. Anything is possible. And I was like, all right, that's my answer. Second question I have for you. Why aren't we shooting trash into space and having it burn up in the atmosphere instead of filling <gasps> landfills? I I literally have had this conversation. Right? I was yes. like, let's just shoot the trash up into space. Uh, I know. And it should burn back on. But they, they said that's the dumbest thing ever because usually it'll just get all caught up in space and then we'll have a trash rain. Well, you know, what about their black holes? Again, the black holes I got up? <laughs> Can we just shoot it? Well, black that's hole? what I'm thinking. Shoot the trash at the black hole. At the black hole. Yeah. All right, we I, act like it's so easy. You just like take a little like shoot gun and just like throw the trash up there. <laughs> that's funny. That's a, that's like really the, that's terrifying. I know. I probably would have walked out. I got crying. more. I got more bad looks with the trash question. Than I got anything else? Uh, we're gonna have, <laughs> we have a special caller calling in. Oh, yeah. um, Cody, did you see a call from a two one three number come in? Uh, I did not. She can uh, try again. Uh, call, I'm, I'm having her call again because uh, we didn't get David Griffin to back me up on True Detective season three, but. We are going to talk about it on TV Talk. This might be the most heated TV Talk you and I have ever had. I'm, I'm like shocked. I'm going to bring in birds for this episode of TV Talk. <laughs> I, I would leave. <laughs> yeah, okay. I went sure. to a party where they had a parrot, and I literally was like, I don't care about working with this brand ever again. I'm no, I don't need to be here. Like, they had a parrot, like, just there. I dated a girl one time. When it was, I think it was in high school. Yeah, it had to be in high school. Went over to her house to, you know, like, whatever. I'd never been to her house before, and they had birds. And I was like, I'm sorry, we're breaking up. Yeah, There's no people, way I can be at a place where people keep birds as pets. Yeah, people who have birds as pets. Huh, it says not available, Cody, for the number? I'm getting other calls. Oh. <laughs> but it's not like, hers. from who? It's two, I, can't, uh, I can't give away the rest of her phone number. <laughs> but do you want me to text you her phone number? Sure. This is great radio right here. Uh, Cody Hall. I'll save the it right now. The myth, the legend. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about I didn't know Amanda's phone number until like eight months into our relationship? Nah. It's okay. No, still doesn't know mine. She We've been is. together for five years. <laughs> that is, you and know we have a child. I'm going to write that down. That's a pretty funny game show. Can you name my phone number? Yeah, no, he does. Right? He definitely doesn't. Uh, so it says she's trying. It rings and then says not available, Cody. Is that, mm. Does that sound right? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I guess keep trying. Uh, all right. Matt, she's got to go to work or something. I don't know. All right. Anyhow, that was a good. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> what a bummer. What a total bummer. Uh, we also have. Okay, I, this is something I want to talk to you because you're good with pop culture stuff. What mm -hmm. do you think of the college mom scandal? Oh, I'm so over talking about this. Really? Yeah, because it's just like. It's but a, but do you, do you see what happened yesterday? No. So they didn't take the plea deal. Lori Laughlin and her husband didn't take the plea deal. What are they? They said they're not guilty. 
They said they're not guilty. Uh-huh. They, the plea deal was like they were going to have to spend two years in jail. Uh-huh. And now they got a money laundering charge added to the charges, which means they could see up to 20 years in prison. Yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't take a plea deal. Because they don't want to go to jail. I mean, it makes sense. But I think these all these people thought, we, we're, not, we're never going to go to jail. And they thought, well, we're, you know, we're celebrities. This doesn't. This was just an innocent thing trying to get our kids in the college. That no. did. This whole thing is so disgusting to me. And it's disgusting on um, the parents' behalf. And then everyone's like, oh, the kids didn't even know. Like, their parents are doing this. That. I'm like, um, those kids showed up for those photo shoots of them, like, pretending to be on, like, weird, obscure sports teams. Mm-hmm. They showed up. Like, what? Like, wouldn't you ask questions? My mom was like, come on, we're going to go take some badminton photos. Yes. I'd be like, why? Holding why? An oar? Yeah. Her daughter's an Instagram, famous Instagram person. Yeah, she's like a famous YouTuber. And, like, uh, there was, like, this whole thing. she's just getting pummeled on YouTube and. Incident. Oh yeah, and it's like so she's lo- she lost a bunch of deals too I because of that. it, and that yeah. was even before the, all the details were out. As soon as it, she lost deals just from the story, like the initial story that her oh, parents no. were involved. But like now that everybody knows that all, everybody's involved, the whole thing is so gross. It's like the fact that you feel like you don't have to work at something. Like it's the worst type of parenting ever. You know? Yeah. Like my, if my parents ever said that to me. I can't even I can't even imagine a world where my parents would be like, "Oh, don't worry, like we're gonna pay we're for gonna you to pay get you in, for you to and get you in. don't even have to worry. Like you could actually do as as horribly as possible." That's a that's a huge issue. It's like the worst thing about parenting. And she made a whole YouTube video about how she didn't want to go to school. This is already while before. she's at USC. I know. She's yeah, like, before. I'm here for the this tailgates month, in college. Yeah, but... for, this is months ago, and it's like, oh, clearly because her whole life she's been brought up to believe that like everything gets handed to her regardless. Not only is her mom famous and rich. But her dad created Mossimo clothing. Like, that's uh, a different kind of money. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a whole different kind of money. I Everything was taken care of. I mean, we're talking money with a B. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe not totally, but you're talking about like five, six hundred million dollars net yeah. worth, maybe more. And she was on a yacht when she found out the story could not be more perfect. I know. She was on a private yacht with, <laughs> with her friends and like one of the... Like one of her friends who like actually like works for USC. Okay. And so they were like, you got you got to get off this. You're, whatever. You're done. Can you imagine? I mean, my parents didn't even talk to sports coaches when I was performing badly. They're like, if you're not working hard enough, you're not going to play. Yeah, like I was ineligible one time. I remember because I was grades. ineligible because of grades. Yeah. yeah. And um, I had a bunch of stuff like coming up because I used to like sing and do all that stuff in high school and like I had a bunch of stuff. And my parents were like, too bad, so sad. Like. I was the lead in a play, and my parents were like, "We're not saying shit. Like, yeah. We're not calling the school." You got to read the outsider. Shane. I was the lead. I like it was like an actual panic attack when I found out that I was ineligible because I was like, "What am I going to do?" Did the understudy come in and take you out of the legs? No, because it was like dress rehearsal. Oh, so wow. they were like, uh, and my my director was also an English teacher and like really like by the books. I love him to death, but he's yeah. by the books. So like my one of my directors Literally would be like, the books. "Just come on, just come on." Yeah. But that one was like, you will not participate until you get your grades up. Whoa, burn. Speaking of somebody whose grades really didn't matter because she was a dancer, on the line right now, <laughs> we have my lovely wife, Amanda, calling in to talk to Sinead and I. What's up? Hey, guys. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. This is so fun. Usually I only get to talk to Josh or Ken. Aw. <laughs> yeah, that's no fun. Now I get- yeah, hey, I get some girl time. Amanda, did you know that Ariana Grande is headlining uh, Coachella on Sunday? No, I yeah. did not know that. Yeah, she is. Ooh, Sunday that night sounds fun, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I said to Shanae, I was like, you were there. That's what our first dance was. And all the, the people out there are like, your first dance was Ariana Grande. Let me let me get. So yeah, it started it off slow. Definitely mm-hmm. was. And then it, it bro- definitely was. No shame. <laughs> no shame. No shame. And then it broke it down. And we did a sweet choreographed dance to Ariana Grande. Uh, what is the title of the song? It's like. Uh, I think it's. I'm so, I'm into, so you. into you. I'm so into you. Yeah. I would say like into you or so yeah. into you. Yeah. Uh, and we, we choreographed a dance. We did a lift. Did yeah. we hit the lift, Sinead? Yeah, you yeah. guys hit every every yeah. single move. It was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. <laughs> also, I was so we drunk really that I was committed. shocked it was by hard it. To hear the music over everybody. Oh yelling. no, you guys so, are perfect. Honestly, we, I felt like we kind of had to wing it, but it worked out. Yeah, yeah. Did uh, do you know uh, Amanda that Sinead has a scar from our wedding? I have two scars, two one scars. on each leg. <laughs> well, wait. But I do remember, I mean, I was not that drunk at my wedding, so I do remember you saying towards the end of the night that you, like, backed into the the fire pit. Yep. <laughs> I sure did. Twice. <laughs> One on each oh, leg. Man. Mm-hmm. That oh, is tough. no. I well, mean, there's so much more to that story. I should have had some sort of, like, 
covering. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, the fire pits were definitely going, and they were low to the ground. So. Yeah, oh, they God, definitely I'm were. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's all right. It's it cool. Happens. I like scars, you know. It's, it's lifelong like memory sorry. of your wedding. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, Amanda, we were talking about, and Sinead is jumping down my throat on this one, that we both really enjoyed season three of True Detective. Um, wait, you both did, or you're saying I... You and I did. did. Sinead did not like season three at all. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. I I liked it. I didn't love it. Uh, Look at that. Have you been lying to me for months? (laughs) Oh, wow. This is just... I am just What else have you been lying about? I was so frustrated with that show, and you know it. I honestly had such a hard time watching it after a while. I was like, oh, my God. Like, where? I was so upset because I felt like, is the ending just going to be, like, this, it better wrap up in a way. I was so upset because I was like, if I'm just going to watch this poor guy lose his mind because he's still so hung up on this case, and then it's just going to be, like, nothing, no one important in the story. I was like, there's got to be a twist, and whoever's involved has to be somebody who's, like, very yep. much in the story. And it was. No, no. The twist at the end was amazing. N- there was no twist. They just told you what happened. I even came up with a better ending. I said to I said to Nils, I was like, how much do you want to bet that the reporter who's interviewing them is the missing girl? He was like, oh, that would be good. That didn't happen either. Oh, that would have been so good. So much better. Like Man, anything. That they is pretty good. Right? <laughs> like she could have been trying to solve the case herself and figure out why they never found her. That would have been yeah. a thousand times better. But what instead it was like, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it was instead some random girl at the end that like honestly doesn't even like matter. It, it didn't, she didn't matter yeah. because she had chosen not to matter. Yeah. True, true, true. And true. What, Shoot. what bothered me was that he, I mean, I the, the ending was sweet in that we, we saw that she was alive and living a yeah. happy life. Yeah. But, what bothered me was that, like, okay, he got his closure in a sense, but he still, it ruined his life. Yep. That case, like, mm. he, he, his family fell apart. Yeah, he his wife his mind died his from memory. mysterious like, ca- causes that nobody ever talked about. They never about. told us how she died. Yeah, they didn't tell no. us anything in and that show. And why didn't the daughter like being at home with him? Right. They, they never, yeah. They never, yeah, and all, they never told us that's that That's what either. I'm saying. It was mm. so messy. And I, it, it like. But Stephen Dorff was good. Yeah, they were both really they good were, acting. They were both the two of them were great actors. That's okay. that's like not to be you know they were great actors. Stephen Dorff okay. was incredible. Yeah, right. Yeah, and Marshall Ali was amazing. Oh, both what was of that them. <laughs> Mah- Mahershala, yeah. Mahershala, Mahershala Ali was really good. good. I do like both of them a lot. Yeah, um, and I haven't seen Stephen Dorff in really anything in so long. I honestly forgot. But he was a good actor. He's good. Yeah, he can uh, nail it. He can nail yeah, it. Yeah, he was great. I like. Yeah, I liked them in it. I, there were just a lot of holes, and I don't know if I got like full closure from it. But um, I guess it could have been worse. Okay. Yeah, because Josh, Josh said he he thinks he likes it more than season one, and I just about like fell out of my chair. I well, now that you're poking these holes in it, now I'm seeing the errors in my ways, and now we don't have a teaser for TV talk later. <laughs> <laughs> now you're poking these holes. I shouldn't have brought up. Oh, yeah, you know. I, no, it, nah, now these are all making sense. The it interviewer does. being the thing. Son of a man. Yeah. So basically, consensus. Yeah. It wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't the best. Uh, Amanda's currently watching a show called mm-hmm. Whiskey Cavalier. Oh, I've are heard you, of this. Are you watching this show? No, Knit? but I have heard of it. You now, had to do that, didn't you? I, I did. I did have to do it. Uh, last night, I was watching a show, and she's like, I'm going to sit in here and watch Whiskey Cavalier by myself. I was like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> so I, I went I, out to watch Jeopardy. I will, Go ahead. I'll tell you why I watch procedural television. <laughs> yeah, so they solve it. Basically, any procedural show I love because I can never keep up with a show week to week. The only one I think I've watched was Scandal, mm. which, like, week to week of with. Scandal? Um, other than that, I can't like commit once a week to the same day. I just never know when I'm actually going to be able to sit down and watch it. Yeah, that makes so sense. Procedural is great because I don't have to know what happened last week. I can just like jump in right. and it's a whole new story. Right. And then you get closure at the end. So Got I've it. been watching Whiskey Cavalier with Scott Foley, who by the way is like the greatest eye candy ever. Sorry, Josh. I love you. But, um, <laughs> what? he's not bad to look at. What? So, you think Scott Foley's better looking than me? <laughs> oh, no, God. no, nobody's better looking than you. <laughs> but he's not bad to Nobody's look at. Bad. That's so sweet. So sweet of her to say, isn't it? Even though she knows in the back. Well, of her you head. know, you are the Zachary Levi of Pittsburgh. That's true. That's what they say. That's what they say. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, 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 Sinead thinks that the only reason you want to see, see Shazam is because you think Zachary Levi is sexy. I didn't say that. I said that's definitely I, a yeah. driving factor because Josh was like, you know, like when the wife really wants to see a superhero movie, I'm like, this must be good. I'm like, yeah, or she wants to see Zachary <laughs> Levi, who is so adorable in that movie. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I would, I do not find it sexy now, like currently. Oh, it's a bummer that Josh I is a Zachary think- Levi. <laughs> I was going to say. I do, I, do, I do think that that once I see the movie, <laughs> I, I'm sure I'll find him a I'll, I'll find him cute as, you know, in that yeah. Shazam role. Mm-hmm. I don't, honestly, I haven't seen a ton of, a ton of his work. What so, about, what about in uh, yes, Maisel? Cute, but... Did you think he was cute in Maisel? Oh, in... oh, oh my God. I totally forgot. I loved him in Maisel. Yeah. Really charming. Okay, right. She felt right. really bad yeah. when, when she chose, when, when so did I. I was the pissed. ending. Yeah. I, I was not. I, I was so mad. I was like, out. What? Sa- when Sa- she Levi? went to, see, when she went to, I don't want to spoil because there are a lot of people that probably haven't seen it yet. But the ending of Mrs. Maisel, I was rooting for that situation. Yeah. And Amanda was rooting for Zachary Levi on the other side. I think. Well, I, it was a bittersweet ending for me in season two. But um, Josh's mom had has she just started watching season one, yeah. so I watched a couple episodes with her when we were in Pittsburgh a few weeks ago. And as I was watching it back, I kind of started hating Joel again. Yeah. yeah. I was like... He's kind of hateable. Honestly, yeah. I, I, I didn't love him. It, was, sucks. it was a redemptive story in season two for yeah, Joel to a certain extent. They did a really good job of doing that, though. Right? They really did. Yeah, because it wasn't... It, I it, Most shows would have gone the route of him like, I'm going to get back into stand-up and compete with her. But instead, right. you know, he was like, you're way better than me. I get yeah, this. Yeah. It, was a, it was a powerful moment. Um Amanda, before we let you go, uh, Sinead and I have a couple uh, things to get to, but I think uh, what Sinead really wants to know is after a year and a half plus of marriage, what's it like being married to me? <laughs> wow, I don't you, know why. It's you funny, just but... read my mind. Is that what you say? Is that what you were saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what, 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 you have a question for Amanda. Go ahead. What do you got? No, I, do, I would love to know. <laughs> what's it like being married to Josh? I mean, I know like lots of Jeopardy on all the time. He cries oh, yeah, all lots, the time. Lots yeah. of Jeopardy. I, I'll say um, life with him is always very funny, like whether I'm laughing at him or with him. Mm-hmm. Um, he definitely keeps things funny all the time, which it's is good. great. Um, it's honestly good. It's weird. We're at this in-between where we're like not having kids, but we've been married for like over a year, so we're not here, newlyweds anymore. Here comes the screws. So They're getting of, put toward me. No, we're <laughs> just kind of enjoying each other, I guess. It's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. We're just having fun and just, you know, living our lives, not trying to like move yeah. Sinead, too Sinead fast said, into the next. Sinead said, have a baby. It helps with taxes. Yeah, if you have one now, <laughs> which is, it's April. This is perfect because yeah. that's when I had, well, that's when, you know, I'm, I made Harrison. I made Harrison. <laughs> I made this little arts and crafts project named Harrison. <laughs> and so then he was born in January and it's perfect. So you guys could start right now, like today. Mm. It would be the best before you I'm leave for Chicago. Bad. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Oh. And then you can get a bunch of money back. Definitely, yeah, I'm not opposed to it. Um, no, we're kind of in that place of like, I don't know if it happens, it happens. Here's, here's a, here's I don't a, know, but, but. Go ahead. What? No, no, I was going to tell a funny story. So we went out to dinner on Tuesday night with a friend, and we were driving back from the west side. So, you know, those long car rides stuck in traffic. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of our friends is about to have a baby pretty soon. Another friend has a baby. Another friend's pregnant kind of a thing. And she, ooh, it's, the car is silent. We're just driving along, yada, yada, yada. She was, when are we going to have a baby? <laughs> when are we going to, like, yeah, do I this? Yeah, I always find the most. I always find the best times to talk about it. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, he's trapped in a car. He can't walk away. Yep. So when do you think we're going to have a baby? Mm-hmm. I don't like to. I, and so I, I treat it. I treated it like, it go ahead. like I'm putting pressure on it. I just like to know. I need to make a plan. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> say I wouldn't say there's pressure. I wouldn't say my head's in a vice, but my head is getting towards the vice. Uh, <laughs> but so I said I treated it kind of like when you order food, right? And you're like, what do you want to do for dinner? I was like, I don't know. What do you want to do? I'm not going to make that decision. You have to make that decision. You're like, all right, Shake Shack it is or sushi it is, whatever. And she, I was like, well, what do you want to do? She's like, what? I can't make that decision. You have to tell me. I was like, all right, well, why don't you tell me, and then I'll answer with what I. Think think and that did not work yeah. it did not work and then the car ride kind of just went silent no for a while one, no <laughs> one so is funny. ever ready i think you just have to like pull the trigger right yeah. I mean, right or you could yeah, just not happen. plan it at all and make a bunch of really bad decisions <laughs> right. and then yeah. like have to deal with it regardless have a baby you know and just cody, deal with it. cody who's pregnant right now babe cody who's who's running the booth you know cody's about to have a baby 
Is he really? Yeah. I did not even know that. Yeah. Breaking news. Yeah, we we talk, like uh, you're doing what? Like three months, Cody? Uh, yeah, he's doing August. August. Aww, that's there awesome. Really good. Yeah. So exciting. Oh my gosh. That is so exciting. It is. Oh, I'm so happy for you guys. Thank Cody, you. Well, Cody. See, babe, see, was, Josh, we're totally late. We're like late mm, to the train. Oh, no. I mean, yeah. come on. Let's make this happen. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I, I joined the club, really you guys. <laughs> <laughs> this club is a club for life. Cody, were you, were you guys planning on it, or was it just a total accident? I was just about to say, like, the day we decided, we, we were in a car. <laughs> we, we had the literal conversation you guys were having, and this was giving me flashbacks. That's so funny. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Amanda. I think the fans love to hear from you. and uh, I you love know, to hear from so you, too. Amanda And Sinead loves to hear from you as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, get back to work. Make some money for this family so we can baby. <laughs> Oh, my God. You are the worst. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you. Actually, Talk to you soon. Actually, let's have a baby so then I don't have to work. Just kidding. Love you, bye. Okay, bye. I love bye. you, too. <laughs> Amanda so McCoog, everybody. Uh, we have about 10 minutes left in the show. I feel like uh, we had a couple, like one little story I wanted to tell because it's the growth this thing and I wanted to see your face on mm-hmm. it. Uh, there was a woman, apparently in, near grave sites, there's a lot of bees. And this woman was in Taiwan and she was cleaning a, a relative's grave site and four bees flew into her eye and she didn't know. Oh, I heard about this. Did you see this? And she's like, her eyes started hurting and get, getting swollen. It's like, I don't know what's in there. And the doctors found the four bees completely alive and living in her eyeball. Yeah, I just don't understand how... You don't see bees flying in your eye? Yeah, like how you don't, f- four of them. Four? It wasn't one. But wasn't it like a special type of bee? Like they called it a special like thing? I'm getting sick thinking about it. It's insane to me, but yeah, I did hear about that. And also like, it just reminds me when people are like, there's all these stories like, oh, I noticed this was happening. I noticed this was happening and people don't get it seen to. Yeah. The second like my eye was like super, super swollen, I would go to the doctor because totally. it's your eyes. It's your like, eyeballs. If your anything happens to your eyes, like you lose your sight. Totally. And I just feel like <laughs> Good, you, very well said, Shane. Very well said. Know, it seems so simple, but yeah. like I don't get it because people put off things with their eyes a lot, and I think it's because people don't like eye doctors. No. Like they don't see it as as much of a necessity because it's like one of those things you only go to if you have contacts or glasses or yep. if something happens to your eye, I know. right? And so I've been when, an eye doctor since 2006. But that's what I'm saying. It's not like a doctor. Like it's, it's like same thing <laughs> it's with not like. like it's, it's, it's a not, doctor. I know, but it's like it's not like the doctor that people are like, I have to go to the doctor. Or, you know, I'm sick. Right. I know, I know, I'm sick. It's like, oh, this, my eyes kind of I bothering mean, me. You go to the dentist before you go to the eye doctor. And Absolutely, you can get fake teeth, but right. you can't get fake eyeballs. No, you can't. No. And like the whole thing, just like it really creeps me out so bad. Um, but I remember a story recently where this guy had. Oh, he was eating sushi every yeah. day. Did you hear that? Uh-uh. He ate sushi every day for lunch. He was in somewhere in California. I think he was in NorCal. He ate sushi every single day for lunch. He started, and? He started feeling sick. Um, it's just funny. I'm like, women with bees <laughs> and eyes. I just wanted to look up what it was called. Um, but he was eating sushi every single day for lunch, and then he started feeling sick. Sweat bees. Sweat bees. Sweat bees. Yeah, that's why. So they go in your sweat ducts and they eat your your tears. In your sweat glands and they feed. (laughs) Yeah. They feed feed off of your tears. Yes. And you know those bees, (laughs) do they feed off your tears? Is that a metaphor? No. (laughs) This is legit for real, Cody. (laughs) This This is me at the end of an episode of This Is Us. A bee flies in my room and just starts feeding on my tears. This is legitimately what's happened. And when those bees come at your eyes, they have one song that they're gonna play as soon as they hit your eye. (laughs) <laughs> Boom. Feeding on your tears. That's insane. Eye bees. <laughs> they're, That's they're called insane. Eye bees. Yeah, they're attracted to sweat and sometimes land on people to imbibe perspiration. <laughs> perspiration. Ugh. They also drink tears. <laughs> These are some seriously <laughs> the, emo bees. Th- this is legitimately what the back of the album of Stained says. We'll drink your tears <laughs> as you listen to our music. And sometimes we land on you to imbibe perspiration. <laughs> You better watch out for these bees at Coachella because it's really hot. I don't want any bees flying in your perspiration. <laughs> Just keep your eyes closed the whole time and your ears open. That's all you need to do. Oh, my gosh. She said a gust of wind blew into her eyes and she just assumed it was dirt. Meanwhile, bees. Bees. <laughs> Don't if it's windy, stay in your house. That's these are yeah, all life lessons. Yeah, don't go lessons. outside in the wind. No, come on. <laughs> yeah, um, but we really quick finish up yeah. the story. He started feeling really sick, and he yeah. started like itching a lot. He's like itching a lot <laughs> after eating sushi. Yeah, he went to the doctor, and they ran a scan, and like literally, when they took a scan of his body, all they saw inside of him was little tiny parasites all over <laughs> his body. <laughs> 
little worms everywhere, like like everywhere, his entire body. And they had to like flush him out little by little by little. Dude, it was, I saw the picture. It's like insane. Like everywhere, little worms in his whole body. And I it's guess like, like Prometheus. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he had gotten like listeria, which is like yeah. common, right? So that why they tell you when you're pregnant not to eat fish. Sure. Which I totally listen to, by the way. <laughs> um, I'm getting sushi later. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. But it's like, a, there's certain types of fish and stuff like that. But like, I think you, nobody should eat raw fish as much as this person was. He was Got eating it. it every single day for yeah, lunch. That's not good. Which like, also like, Broaden your horizons, <laughs> yeah. dude. Come on. Yeah, and I just that to me is weird. So if it, and it could happen to any of us if we ate that much fish, and it would take a really long time. So don't let it freak you out. So the next time you eat sushi, yeah. make sure that your body's ready to. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. It's we've funny. got it. We've got a Sinead and Josh sound clip ready to go the next time we host Collider Live, which could happen sooner than later. Who knows? I mean, Christian, if he leaves town, it's the Sinead and Josh show right here on Collider Live. Cody, should we take a uh, uh, a call? Do we have anything? I can. Give me a minute here. Okay. We've only got like five minutes left on the show. Su- you're going to sushi today? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Don't Not after ever, that story. Don't ever eat salmon. Don't eat salmon. Don't ever eat raw salmon ever again. I'll tell okay. you the story later. I don't yep. want to freak everybody Please. out off the of salmon. I hope we don't have any fans that are like salmon fishermen. <laughs> like, eat Sorry. the salmon. Smoke salmon. Well, if good. you're getting it from a fisherman, that's great. Don't uh, eat raw salmon at a restaurant. Oh. Okay. But, but, Especially in California. <laughs> Apparently, especially not gas station sushi. Have you ever done gas station sushi? Are you sushi? out of your damn mind? No, I know you. Haven't. I have a, a child. I have things <laughs> to live for. <laughs> there are people that do gas station sushi. Nobody does that. Okay, yes. In Pittsburgh, I don't. Maybe <laughs> that's where our best sushi is served is in gas station. We actually have a very good sushi restaurant. A couple very good sushi Just restaurants. Just one. Well, it, it's it, McDonald's. They have sushi on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> if Pittsburgh sushi is a hamburger. <laughs> um, the uh, it's Sinead, It's been great hanging out. Here. Here on Collider Live today. Yeah, it's fun. Do we have a call, Cody? We do now. We do. All right. Uh, welcome to Collider Live. You're with uh, Josh McCuga, Sinead DeFries, the Shinasty. Who do we got on the line? Hey, this is uh, Pac Man Dwayne from Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Hi. What's up, Pac Man? How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. Can you good. play? How y'all doing? Today? Good. good. Man. Living the dream. Living the dream. You're the last call here on Collider Live. What do you got, buddy? Man, I just want to say I love everybody that's in Collider Live and stuff. Sinead, you are awesome. I love your. <laughs> Quirkiness, comedy. Josh, you're the man. Thanks, dude. I say, fuck you and your wife when y'all put your pictures up. Aww. <laughs> because well, every time I put that post up, y'all both like it, and that makes my day. Oh, oh man. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm a lucky guy. No problem. And I must say, uh, one thing I have to ask you, Josh, yeah. um, how much excited is when you were here today that Bad Boys 3 had invited you to set? Man, I tell you what, I've been reaching out to just about everybody to try and get a set visit to Bad Boys 3. Uh, it is in the works. Uh, we are trying really, really hard. They, they've done a couple giveaways for the um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for the set visit, but we are not qualified to do that. We're not allowed as press to enter those those contests. And you see it in the fine print mm-hmm. that if like we're part of press, we're not allowed to go to the set visit. Uh, I will say this, that my cousin lives in Atlanta, and he they were shooting some of it outside of his apartment building. He said it looked amazing. and what? I and So unfair. There's a couple people I know that know a couple things about it. I've seen some of Will Smith's behind the scenes video, but if people are asking me what my most anticipated movie is for whenever, <laughs> it's 100% Bad Boys 3. There isn't another movie I'm more excited for than Bad Boys 3. Bad Boys 2 was on TV yesterday when I got home. It was like the end of Bad Boys 2, and I just, I I, that's it. Yeah, it's a, it, I gotta I watch it. Too. I, I watched it too. When I got off work, I, I saw I was like, Thank God. That's See? so funny. We were watching. It's a reward. It's yeah. a reward for your hard work at the That's day. That's so funny. We were watching the Jordan Woods interview recently, and yeah. then Will Smith like called in to talk to her. Sure. And this is like so dramatic. But yeah. all it said at the bottom was, on set of Bad Boys 3. Yeah. And my my boyfriend, who was like not paying attention, he was like, what? They're making another Bad Boys <laughs> takes his headphones off? Because he was like, are you really going to watch this interview right now? And yeah. I was like, yeah. And he must have just caught it right at the right time. Yeah. But it said on set of Bad Boys. And he's like, wait a second. What? They're yeah. making another one yeah and I was like well I'm glad that's what you took away from this that's exactly. fine that's really fine yeah. it's gonna I'm, I I can't imagine this movie being anything but perfect really and truly I think <laughs> dude I'm telling you this movie is gonna blow the doors off the yeah. place these young directors that are hungry with it uh the, the team that is there I'm just mm-hmm. I can't wait for it's bad gonna be boys even 3. better than adventures <laughs> it will be <laughs> this is bad boys 3 endgame it's 100 percent it Dwayne thanks for the call man thanks Thank for you. being a fan really appreciate it man and no uh problem. Hope- and one more thing yeah I think one more thing Cody you are the Fucking man. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he is. Have fun in Chicago, y'all. Appreciate it. Hope, uh, hope to meet you sometime, man. Really do. 
All right, man. Have a great time. You too. Bye. Take care. Uh, I'd like to agree with Dwayne. Cody is the man. He, he is. This show is nothing uh, without Cody, really and truly. The sound bites, what he does by himself. I compare it to when my great grandmother was raising children. She made homemade pasta every single day by herself. She made homemade sausage. Mm. She cooked huge meals for 12, 15, I'm 18 so people. <laughs> Me too. That sounds so good. I know. And she did it all by herself. And what Cody does back there, it, all by himself, is nothing short of uh, amazing. So, again, Cody, thank you for Love you, Cody. your hard work. Thank you guys for watching Collider Live today. Before we get out of here, uh, Sinead, tell the people where they can find you. Because this is my favorite part is the Sinead exit. <laughs> Why? The outro. Because I know what you're going to say. What, what do you mean? Uh, you can follow me at Sinead DeFreeze on Twitter and Instagram and NatSoSinead.com. <laughs> dot blog. Go no, dot blog. Yeah. Farts. Uh, and on my YouTube channel. And then also I'll be at Coachella this weekend. <laughs> you so, lo- you know, look for me. Look, I'll be there. Look for Sinead at Coachella. Make on sure Sunday. You comment on our amazing Instagram pictures. You guys, if you're in Chicago this weekend, you're at Star Wars Celebration, or you just live there and you're going to Mark Ellis on Friday, tomorrow, or you're going to the Schmodown, please, can't wait to meet you guys. Uh, Yay. Uh, hopefully we'll have enough Josh for Deputy buttons for as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. There might be like 2,000 of you, so I don't have that many buttons. Thank you guys for watching Clatter Life, for listening. Subscribe to all the channels. Subscribe to Collider, uh, watch Collider Movie Talk, TV Talk, Heroes, Jedi Council, all that kind of fun stuff. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga. We really appreciate you guys. Love you so much. Remember, it's a lot easier to be nice than mean. It's way easier to love than hate. Collider Live.